All right, let's do some audio checks. We're live. Audio on checks, hell yeah. Checking, talking, checking, checking talk, talking, talk, 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 yes. Talking, just conversation. Tucking, happening. tucking, just talking, one, two, four. Back and forth, three, eight, nine, check, 12. check, check. Numbers, like, check, numbers, one, two, talking. one, two. There are numbers being listed. Okay, let me numbers talk a little bit louder, I think. I don't. All right, I'm good. Um, I love how low latent, latency. Uh, I have it set to ultra low for a reason, but. It's insane. Like it, I, I can't hear myself sometimes because I, I, by the time I get to the video, it's like not there anymore. Hey, pepperoni in chat. What up? What up? What? Um. All right. Let's just hop in. Welcome to the Blueberries Podcast, episode number two hundred forty nine. We're one away from from retiring. Finally, we did it. I say that every week. Uh, it's insane. It's gonna happen one day. We're just it's gonna in- die, and then this podcast will end. If you die, do you want me to continue the podcast? I mean, only if you like have some of my ashes in the background, like in in your helmets. Would you Would you want me to AI you? Yeah, I was about no. To say. Okay, <laughs> absolutely not. I think it would have been a funny idea about a year and a half or two years ago. It'd be like, oh yeah, go ahead. Now it'd be a little bit too real. Yeah. Um. Oh, that. Uh, I was watching a Moist Critical video. Have you guys heard of, of Suno AI? No. No. Dude, this shit's actually scary. Hold on. Uh let me let me get on there for us. Um this thing, uh, and I'll link it to you guys so you guys can, can make something too. Uh let's see. Um this thing can make songs out of prompts. And you know how we've been laughing like, oh, this uh let's see. And then I'll message. <laughs> there you go. Um, there you go. Everything's in there. Uh, and you know how, how we've been joking? Like, all right, AI music's like, you can tell it's AI music and it's it's pretty blatantly weird and, and off. This thing is scary that it sounds decent. So, like, let me see if I can get the, the whole thing on this. Um... It's going to be, let's see. Let's see if it fits on there. Okay, not really. Uh, everything's kind of messed up on the screen, but it's fine. Um, okay, let me see. Actually, let me not do this real quick, and let me sign in real quick. Um, I, yeah, th- this thing is 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 really weird. Whoa, they have a song about spaghetti. <laughs> and Laura moved some. Let's see, log in. Um, okay. okay, the first few notes of that fucking spaghetti song sound like something straight out of fucking Psychonauts. Okay, so check this out. Uh, let me put this back on here for us. Um, all right, you guys can see this, okay? Oh, make it song is yeah. disabled while we have great infrastructure. Okay, let's see. I made a few songs though. I think let's see if they're, they're on. Oh, they're upgrading everything. Oh, perfect timing. All right, this is why AI is never gonna work. You know, it's always <laughs> it's always like that. Uh, I'll come back. Maybe maybe by the end of the podcast I'll be here, dude. So you can uh, now. So you can put a prompt of a genre and what it's about. So I so like go look at Boys Critical's video. He makes song like <laughs> songs about a. Uh, uh, what was it like? Like s- sitting on your nuts, or something like that. And like, it actually makes a whole song, and it does not sound bad. It's it's upsetting. So, um, and then I looked up. I made I made a couple, and I, I put uh, like an emo pop song about uh stubbing your toe at night when you go to pee. And it it made a song that sounds like an actual coherent song that you would hear. Like it's not any of this like weird AI thing that we were hearing, like when that whole song was trending and it was weird. No, it sounds like a real ass song. Um, the only thing it can't do right now, it can't do trap music or rap music. So, y'all out there, you guys, you guys are safe. You're, you're you guys are safe from the AI. For now, AI is AI is not coming for y'all yet. But like, uh, like it, act, it actually makes like metal music, rock music, anything like that. It can turn out like that. And you're talking like the songs created in like twenty or thirty seconds. Um, we'll see if it's on by the end of the podcast. I'll keep up and I'll refresh every now and then. 
but it's it's actually fucking scary. If you're actually curious, go watch Boy's Critical videos on it. He, I think his title is like, you should be scared of this, because you should. Because the songs sounded decent, <laughs> which is upsetting. If it was like sounded bad, I'd be like, yeah, okay, cool. And the fact that they sound decent, it, it's... Like, from now on, like, there's no way AI is not used just in music. Like, yeah, I, I promise you. All it's no, no, it's not saying it's gonna be used like that, but like, imagine this. No, here I was gonna say that's gonna be actually the one saving grace of it is it's already been held up in court multiple times that you can't copyright AI generated content, so it's not gonna matter. No one can really make much money off of AI music. No, but Cause... imagine it using it like as a prompt where, all right, uh, someone's big time name out there. Can't really think of a song. You know what? I want to make a pop song about uh, this thing. Let it play. And all you need to do is like mimic enough off that. Who's going to catch that? No, like that's that's the future. Like it, I can promise you that's the future. Like there's no more writer's block for anyone that just wants to churn out music and just get just pump out the pump that out. Like it's, it's going to happen and you can't trace that. Yeah, you're not going to make direct... Direct AI songs are not gonna click in, but like I could promise you, it's it's like, it's like almost like uh, writing an essay, but but using that as the structure format for what you're gonna write. Yeah, that's what it is. Like it's it's and you can't trace it. Who's gonna find out? No one's gonna find out. It's, it's gonna pop off on TikTok. That's, that's for sure. <laughs> like, yep. Especially well. That's the one upside I can see to it is like content creation since it is so like iffy with like how music's handled with like using it in videos and stuff like that. So I'm I'm just imagining like if you needed something to go imitate it, you could just type in like song about blah 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 rock type blah 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 throw it in and avoid like any sort of uh, YouTube like auto catching or whatever the fuck DMCA right. function. So, I mean, plus side, but yeah, it's very dystopian. <laughs> it, it is. <laughs> very gross. Um, this, by the way, this is our video game podcast. We go live every Tuesday on youtube.com slash blue rupees. I'm Should Adrian. We stop calling it our video game podcast at this point? Nah, because we still do a basis of video games. As long fair. as we're showing off stuff that we bought that's that's video game oriented, I think it's always going to be about that. That's uh, fair. Unless you want to do a genre change at like 300, then we'll, we'll figure it out. We'll do a we'll do a political podcast at 300. <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll make some money. We'll grift. Um. Yeah, so I'm Adrian. That's David. We got Kells on here. From the, yeah, we pulled him yeah, from the yeah, chat yeah. straight onto here. Uh, Shouts to Kells. Yesterday was on our uh, <coughs> Games Gone By episode for Persona Five Royal, which solid about hour and a half, almost two hour talk of Persona. And then we just derailed into other other talks because that's just the way <laughs> that's the way everything goes like this. It's just how it works. True. Um. But yeah, no. Uh, AI is dystopian. It's very weird when you when you think about that and. Uh, it, it's I, I had that moment it's that one picture that uh i mean to be fair it's tough if you're just at a glance but it was that picture of uh someone smoking in a mcdonald's that was presented as ai at first like oh look this guy makes ai images he made a uh how would it be like how would AI imagine mcdonald's there and then someone posted it on facebook with no context and it was just everyone just like responded back like as if it was a real picture and that's just the that's the shit like that's the shit right there that uh uh, we're <coughs> we're gonna hit this phase of <coughs> excuse me. I'm gonna have that cough forever, so shout outs. Um, it's that next phase of of boomers already can't tell fake images as it is. Yeah. Imagine that, especially because I, I was on a kick of watching like those catfish videos and stuff like that of of uh, people just getting tricked by like the obvious scammers, right? But now imagine it when it's like very real to a point where like it slips us up every now and then. It's it's like scams are gonna go off the wall. Uh, what's real and what's fake is going to be crazy. Um, and I'm putting my money down. I have a feeling, you know, and I think I talked about this last time, I forget, but uh, generations overcorrect. I feel like the one that's going to precede the one, the TikTok generation, is going to try to be offline. And I hope that's the case. I think that'd be a cool cause a cool uh, roundabout. We're gonna, they're going to see their parents always on the phone. They're going to rebel by not. But let's let's get off that. Let's, let's stay away from that. I think that'd be a good culture to kind of divide things out because uh it, it it's weird man it, we're at a point where it, it's just weird <laughs> well like even now you're kind of seeing it right like some people and uh 
especially younger kids and like our generation too we're kind of moving more towards like that analog kind of like more towards like the physical stylistically like, too right like the the vhs right. yeah, look yeah. is very popular with people which is cool yeah. with me um yeah and we were talking we had a big long talk about vinyl of all things too right so it's like mm-hmm. a little more into the we're, we're, we're regressing a little bit which is cool because also like the way i think about it um i just don't it's kind of like how i feel about graphics and video games right i don't need them to be like that much like yeah we get like the battlefields and you get like those uh what was it, like unrecorded or something remember that that clip that was going around of like the police yeah, SWAT yeah, footage yeah. that looks hyper realistic it's like oh that's crazy but i don't really need that i'm i'm perfectly content with stylistic choices and like if we're looking at like battlefield being like top of the line forever from here on i don't really care to go past that like i, I think at that point we're kind of right because like what was the battle bit was fun and that was like that was like not yeah that was not anything like that. Especially when it comes to games, it's very much in. It seems to get lost still somehow in the world of quadruple A published titles. Yeah, I hate that term. Uh, like Skull and Crossbones, <laughs> uh, where somewhere along the way we kind of forgot that a game should either be interesting or fun. Pick one, and then go from there. Uh, we don't need all these uh, fucking billions of dollars of investments to get, like, every grain of sand animated. Like, what purpose does that actually serve to either make it interesting or fun? Right. And and Spider-Man 2, I think, is the biggest egregious example. Like, I know it did well, but $300 million for that game is actually kind of wild. Um, and I mentioned on the Games Gone By, but uh, shout-outs to Helldivers beating it in sales in the UK. Um, I think... With that also being a uh, smaller game, I, I just I just want I feel like we're we're kind of throwing uh, like shout out to Power World this year, shout out to like Hell Divers like hey we want smaller, cheaper games like we don't need every game to be this bloated, triple A thematical blockbuster right like I don't really want that either it's already kind of exhausting to have to deal with those. Um, and I think Sony's dealing with that too, right? Because they their slate's like dry. Yeah. Uh, in fact, pretty much all of them seem to be kind of going into a lull right now. <laughs> Nintendo has been slow, and that's because it, the Switch Two is like right around the corner. It's around basically. here. It's somewhere. Uh, Xbox. I don't know, man. Like I, I've been an Xbox defender for ages, and I was always of the mind like, just give them time to cook. I've been saying that long. It's like something has to be burning at this point because. I was like, once Phil Spencer rolled in there, cool. Let let him let him digest and get get rid of all the, the nonsense. Cool, but like we've had these acquisitions for a while, and like, I don't know. It just, uh, I mean, it, we talked about that forever too. Is that I, I I think Microsoft was too hands off. I think they 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 got scared after something like Scalebound, where they got too hands on, which they were. They were too hands on, right? Because they're like, hey, we need a Fable multiplayer game. We need this. Oh, shout out, Joker trailer just dropped. Uh, we need all this stuff, but uh, then they got scared and they went hands off, and then we got Redfall. Where, oh, we needed someone to just play this at any point in there in the history and be like, no, this is not good. Why, why are we doing this? You see, like, I was thinking about this today actually. Something so weird about like Microsoft and Xbox right now is like the Halo season two just ended and they didn't do like anything with that, did they? Like with Wait, season two happened season two yeah. happened and, and actually people said it was people said it was better yeah was it wasn't like i i fam some fanboys were like oh that was great cool but but i think universally everyone said it was better even if they didn't like it people said okay that was better uh and i know you, you don't care about shout spoilers if you're watching for spoilers are you watching spoilers Kels? do you care or is it i don't give a fuck uh, about show. <laughs> so i i'm i'm interested because Dude, as a ha- as a as a self proclaimed Halo fan, I'm morbidly curious. When you lost me halfway through the season one, and I was bored checking my phone, I like this is unfortunate. Um, I heard by the end, so season two has like the battle for Reach, and it has a uh, the flood is at the end. The battle for Reach, all the Spartans don't have their armor. Yeah, so they took away that. That <laughs> I I'm I'm so it's kind of that thing with Marvel, where it's like the actors want to be seen which is fair i understand right like hey i'm acting people i want people to see my face because i'm acting i understand that but like your character don't don't try out for a character that's helmeted because like that that's sort of like that's what we want right that's that's our 
our way of connecting with that because it is like that. And it's like it's why you see in Marvel where like as as in fact like, like Guardians three right Star Lord didn't wear his helmet once in Guardians three. Yeah. Uh, That's my biggest issue. <laughs> yeah. Fucking. Yeah, I, I have that same one. Right. Too. Like, well, <laughs> I and then, you know what? But then to be fair, like I didn't even realize it until after the movie. I was like, wait a second. Yeah. Why? Why is his face all blow it up? Dude has has a helmet. Um. Yeah, but like, like that's why all the actors like more like less and less have their out their their armor on because they want the, their face like they're like well we want to be advertised as shown as the blockbuster so it makes it oh, makes fuck that get in the robot Shinji right I, I I agree I'm like if you're if you try out for that you know what you're getting into but um yeah no people are saying it's better I'm 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 morbidly curious I I don't want to spend time because I'd rather do other things but also like I feel like. If you guys did better, that's cool. I guess I don't know. It's unfortunate. I, I Microsoft with Halo is so weird to me. It's so weird to me. Like, why? Why? How did we drop the ball? Someone pointed out like 2007 to 2010, we had three Halo games, three ODST and Reach. Yeah, good times. I know David was a little mixed on ODST, but I mean, like, as a as a cheaper game. That was like not meant to be a full fledged game, right? It came with Halo 3's multiplayer attached to it. Yeah. Um, good time. It also uh, came with uh, Forza Three. You could get like the dual pack. Oh right, right. Did 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 did. <laughs> I forgot about it. that. Um, and then uh, but then you're talking from like 2013 uh, to 2024, we've had like four, five, and infinite. So like in ten years we had three games and they were all mid. Like, I I don't know. And then yeah, it, 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 Microsoft just dropped the ball on Halo so much and it it's bums me out every time. Well, on top of that, tomorrow the Fallout show comes out. Are they doing anything with Fallout? No, but I did I did hear that there was some there was some good impressions about that right because it's it's yeah. it's yeah Christopher Nolan's brother you know he's not dropping the ball the release. Yeah. yeah, they push it up, and then yeah, Christopher Nolan's brother doing that, and he's like, "I'm not." He's he has a prestige to his name. He's like, "I'm not dropping the ball on this." What the hell? Um, yeah, it's just so weird to me that like they have like two of these huge franchises that you would think for their brand, and just nothing. There's no like I feel like there's almost minimal promotion to it. There's no like tie-ins with you, games. And you know what's funny? It's so weird. The, let's flash back to 2013 when Don Matrix is up there presenting Xbox One, and all you we talk about is TV for like. 80 percent of the conference yeah it's so bizarre where we're like we're in this weird track i i <clears throat> you know what i'm, I'm curious Let, let's throw this out there what's now that phil spencer's been in the helm for like 10 years now what do you guys feel about phil spencer hmm. i don't know it's kind of hard because like for me like i'm tempted to compare him to like his tim contemporaries yeah and just seeing like what's being done like what jim ryan was able to do at sony and what um boys over at nintendo sean Layden, like that that era was was sony's prime i feel like sony like sony was like exactly. firing all cylinders sean Layden was like really pushing out there with the indies and all that stuff too uh jim ryan came out there and just uh killed it and died uh <laughs> and, and everything's kind of like yeah um reggie is hard to compare he was always compared to reggie but reggie was definitely always a just american spokesperson for japanese nintendo so i don't think he had re- as much push as people said mm-hmm. um yeah. otherwise we would have gotten mother three exactly yeah right and then uh we i got i'm i'm, I'm curious because because like we they just had that was that news story this week about uh microsoft creating a division just for game preservation yeah i'm <clears throat> i'm like cool. on paper Super cool. Yeah. When you look at it, y'all better be releasing an upgraded Xbox with the disc drive on it. Like, you cannot say you're for for game preservation if your your whole next lineup has no disc. I almost guarantee you, it's because they're gonna do some bullshit where like they're gonna. So the story has been like they're gonna allow other stores on it, and didn't whenever the Xbox One first came out, they actually had like their system open like where you could emulate through. Like, yeah without having to root it or anything yeah you still kind of technically can you just have to have a uh developer's license yeah so i feel like that's they're gonna they're gonna be like oh well digitally preserved look you can play all of these games now 
Well, it's one of those things where they're, they're, they seem to be setting themselves up for something. I've said this for the longest fucking time. The Xbox console line should be an entry-level gaming PC. Mm-hmm. It should basically just be running Windows. It should have uh, a few security things in check to make sure that, you know, it, it, you know, it has the window suite, you know, there's your word, there's your fucking outlook. Uh, here's, uh, a means of just simply, you put the game in, it doesn't install it, an update and it just plays, but there's also productivity tools from Microsoft baked right in. There's your edge browser. It effectively is like almost the iPhone of Windows. Of here's your walled garden environment of running Windows. Yeah. That's what it should be. Like yeah, that, that but, would be the biggest shrink for them. Okay, I, 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 I don't. Whatever they do, I do think they open the stores. Cool. That'd be that'd be amazing. I think. But I think overall, if if I feel like that's kind of a backhanded thing to do that, and then just not include it. even an optional disk drive at that point. If you're gonna like be be a pain about it. I need an optional disk drive or something. Like you need as to do that. As long as they don't do the disk drive like Sony did, that shit pissed me off. Whenever I first got my PlayStation, like you had to <sighs> connect it and update it just to even use the disk and drive. Because you're adding the tumor to it. The disk drive. You're adding a tumor to it. It's like they didn't even like make it look clean. It's just like oh, you're at that lump on there. Um, but yeah, I, I, what are our thoughts on Phil Spencer? Then I think he's he's been here. Let me let me check when he started. Let me see when did Phil Spencer? Phil Spencer. Promoted to the head of Xbox. Um. Yeah. Oh, it's been uh, officially ten years, March thirty first, twenty fourteen. Twenty fourteen. So ten years of Phil Spencer. Where we feel like with with how Xbox has been. Remember, at at this point, ten years ago, Xbox One, standard like you had to be with the Connect. So it's five hundred dollars. Uh, they yeah. they just dealt with that whole uh, that uh, always online that they just I don't think ever recovered from. I think the news zeitgeist was so crazy that people just didn't realize till like a year or two afterwards. Oh, Xbox doesn't do that. The cruel irony, right? Which I mean, like it was so ahead of its time on that that it was not not a, not a good way, right? But like you think about it now, the stuff like they had is like not a bad idea where we're at now, right? Because like. They had libraries you could lend out your digital games to people, um, that without having to do all like the, the weird like like uh, um, account sharing and all that. Yeah. Uh, check in once every twenty four hours, which is what pretty much everyone does now. Like, very rare do people actively just remain offline, um, unless it's like by choice, right? Or, or they need to. Um, so yeah, that's where, where Xbox was. Phil Spencer gets the helm where we're at now what what are our thoughts uh my controversial i guess controversial opinion is bad because just thinking about that now the way you put it 2014 to now he's tanked well not him but since he's been in charge both halo and gears have tanked which i feel like those are kind of like the big money like the big like the big franchises for xbox and they're running at their highest because you had Halo 3, you have ODST, you have Reach on the 360. And then you had Gears 3 do amazing. It was like the MLG like uh, like poster child. And then like you get to the Xbox One and what do you do with it? Yeah, it's, Xbox has lost its identity essentially. Yeah. I... And I'm curious as to what that is, Phil Spencer. Like obviously at this point, right? Like we're still grinding into it, but like... You think about like Matt, Don Matrick was who presented Halo Four. Um, Gears, uh, Judgment was under Don Matrick, right? So like there were some little like subtle like bumps in the road of like, oh wait, like it, it it's not all cherry, but but you're you're correct. Like Gears Five did not have the shake up that everyone wanted to with Gears. Like Gears is not the name that it was, um, which it's funny you mentioned that because I was thinking about it, like as we're approaching this topic. I still want to play Hype Busters, dude. I, I heard, I everyone told me, yeah, Gears Five is what it is, and I agree. But like everyone told me, is like Hype Busters, play Hype Busters because that is what old school Gears was. And I'm like, yeah. I'll try to get David to play that. I forget. I don't think 
Was that you were you were not a gears person? I forget was that what it, what it was, David? Or... No, I liked gears. We just never had time to go through high, high busters, right? I forget why. Yeah. I was I was trying to get yeah. you. It was back when that came out. You, me, and Gore. I was trying to get to play that. I forget what was our. We had a few barriers as to why we couldn't. I think it was timing, and then just like by the time we got around to it, I think there were other games to play. But man, high busters. I, I've just heard so much good stuff about that. Which, if it, assuming it is good, I hope it holds up because because there's rumblings. Gear six is kind of. It should be on there on the corner, right? Like we're 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 at that point. You would hope. I mean, it's one of those things, like you said, with the other companies slowing down. It's like, what 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 is there to look forward to? Like, what's the big big thing coming up for them? Right. Um, Besides <laughs> Elder Scrolls, which we'll just hear whispers in the wind about that until it actually comes out. So we can't have you on the podcast without you introducing your uh, your bud. This is ass. No, look at that smile. Look at that smile. Hey, we got perfect duality. No more cats. Now dog. Yeah, and then it's true. Big one. Come here. Come here. God bless you big for how chunk. much hair oh, and goodness. stuff you have to comb out of those guys. Big chunk. Big chunk. Oh, yeah. They're shedding right now, too. So it's perfect. Yeah. That, that's <laughs> You can make a whole coat out of that every day. Yeah. Start selling it on Etsy. There you go. <laughs> make some size. Go for the gold. <laughs> Earn your rent, guys. Um, So... Yeah, the games. I, it's funny because I, I, I don't, I don't know. It was he had an interview with kind of funny. He kind of, he was kind of a little down on himself, saying like, I feel like they pay me more than I deserve. And, and like that's true. And, and like, because because he has been hands fuck, off can you though. Not change that. <laughs> they they have he's hands off with a lot of these people, and it was like that was the, the thing. And I think that they had to fix that. Sure, I we talked. I just mentioned it again, but like, to be fair, like, we did get backwards compatibility due to Phil Spencer. Right. True. And Game Pass. We got the connector moved. Ooh, yeah. We got the hardware back into where it should be, I think. Hey, okay, so I want I like to talk a lot of shit on Connect, but I use the hell out of the Connect just walking into the house. Xbox on dude. <laughs> so the, good. <laughs> I yeah, dude, when it was it was so nice. Like I I was tired and by the time I walk home, I'm like, do my routine, getting changed, making a little bit of food, yelling at Xbox, hey, do this, do that, do this, do that. By the time I'm done, I got my plate of food or something. I sit down, whatever game I want, it's playing. Whatever video I want, it's playing. It was just set, dude. It was actually, it was actually really cool. Uh, my favorite story I ever had though was 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 uh, how it, it screwed with me. Where uh, I had a buddy playing uh, Killer Instinct. He was getting his ass kicked online. He wasn't that, the guy playing was wasn't that good. I'm like, all right, whatever. Let me let me, let me beat him real quick because he was like T-bag or something. I'm like, let me beat him real quick. He handed me the controller. The Connect saw that I had been on that it, I was holding it, signed me out or signed them out and signed me in. So it disconnected from the match. Well, <laughs> I was like, that was cool, but also that was dumb as hell. The the Connect had a really um, I don't know if you played 2K at all, but on 2K the Connect would if you cussed, it would pick it up and foul. It'd give you oh, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah, that's, so many, that's some fucking cuckery right that's there. That's hilarious. Oh. Yeah, they would tee you up for it, and I remember the first time I found it out. It was, I think, I'm pretty sure that was the last time I used the connect. <laughs> did, did I? Did you ever know what my old gamer tag used to be? No. I saw my gamer tag around a few times before I landed on where I'm at now. But my Xbox uh, gamer tag early early Xbox One launch, I swat, I switched it to Xbox Snap Twitch. <laughs> so there were times I'm playing people, especially in Ki. And then they just they they just were playing. And all of a sudden, they just stop because they read my gamer tag and the connect booted them out <laughs> into Twitch. <laughs> I got my so gamer tag. Slow. Yeah, it got banned, so they they made forced me to change. I had to pay for my own change. Some bullshit. <laughs> but but that was that's, yeah, that's that was sure bullshit. There. Yeah, that is horseshit. Yeah, there was a time where. Uh, uh, we're, we're I think it was me, Gore, and someone else were playing uh Friday Thirteenth, and I forget what what the story was or what happened, but I was trying to get somewhere, and then I guess the Xbox thought it heard it. I, I think I forget what I said, but the Xbox picked up saying me saying uh, Xbox played Dirt Five. I don't know why it thought I said that, but it just kicked me out of a game and just <laughs> loaded up Dirt Five. I'm like, cool, oh, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I think policy wise, um, I, I I think Phil Spencer's done a lot policy wise, right? Like I think the Xbox hardware, 
And when you look at the Xbox One being a damn VCR, also that that terrible move I thought where they made they redesigned the Xbox 360 to look at the Xbox One, which made zero sense to me. I'm like, why would you want two different products to look exactly the same? Um, but then like, yeah, I think the Xbox like hardware got back on track. Um, we got rid of the Connect, got got Game Pass, got backwards compatibility, um, got stuff like the. Uh, Elite controllers got the uh, the the, uh, uh, the lab where you can make the controllers. Lab, That's really cool. Yeah, I liked using that. The uh, the accessibility controllers we got there too. So I think, mm. in a lot of ways, I think Phil Spencer helped in a lot of hardware pushes and like in like UI. I wouldn't know about UI, I guess, but but like I guess like policy change like that. But the games themselves have certainly tanked. Um, it has lost its identity. It's really like, I th- and it sucks. Cause Halo Infinite felt like for a little while, felt like we, we there was a, a sliver of hope where it was like, everyone's talking about Halo again. The beta is really fun. Is this it? Are we back? Are we back? No campaign, no split screen again. Content was dry, and I'm like, damn, because I played ever I played Halo Infinite again like once like about a month or two ago. And it was still fun. I, I, I never did it like Infinite. I still love Infinite. The gameplay is so good in Infinite. Multiplayer is so good in Infinite, but just like, and even as me, like I'm, I'm, I'm kind of a boomer where I'm like, I don't care if I don't get new maps, right? Like I played, I played Halo Two. I got like what, I got five maps once, and then I got two maps later. In the span of like the four or five years I played that game, that was fine with me. I don't need new guns every time. I don't need new cosmetics, but like. I understand that that the need for them now, so that that kind of sucked. But I don't know. It's it it's tough. The Gears Five, I think, just came and went. That was, it was it was nothing there. Uh, oh, Fable Infinite, disappeared. Dude, they used to be a like, pillar. Yeah, like Halo Infinite. Like the the multiplayer is so weird because like they took out like all the things that make sense. Like there's no progression. Like there's no leveling. Like whose bright idea was to, to take that shit out of there? Like, there's no sort of progression to keep you looped into, like, coming back, playing more, spending more. Right. All it, you had was the Battle Pass in the store. Yeah, and, you know, I, 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 to be fair, the Battle Pass I enjoy because I'm, I'm glad it's one of those yeah, no fine. FOMO ones. You can go back and actually right. rebuy ones, which is cool. Like Helldivers. Yeah. Shout out to those two. I think those two have the, because. The only two. Yeah. I, I, I say it as a Marvel Snap player, right, because I'm paying for season pass monthly. But, but like, Overwatch, I've, I've, I've stopped. I've not played Overwatch for so long. Nope. Because at that point, I was really like, I'm, I'm playing for two battle pads. I'm playing, I'm playing Marvel Snap, playing Overwatch. I'm not doing two. And then it was like, you know what, though? If if Overwatch had a thing where it was like, hey, you can buy passes, progress them whenever you want. I remember because it was one time I didn't complete it. And I lost all uh, interest in like, all right, I'm good. Um, but if like if they ever had a time where, like, hey, you can go back and buy all these retroactively. That, that's probably going to happen to Halo one day. Like, I'm probably going to just go back and just like, I'll sink 40 bucks into Halo and just unlock a bunch of stuff for however long i want that's fine with me um i think part of it halo's never needed it right like talking from one two three to four five had the rec pack so like we started going back into that but like it didn't need it earlier so i think they have a hard time wanting to add that in because it's like succumbing to where everything's at now right like we have to do everything that everyone else is doing but they just never quite nailed it um. Yeah, but then you think about like, Fable used to be a pillar. It's not, not even existing anymore. I, I'm, fa- I, I'm, I, I feel like we we watched a Halo. We watched a Fable trailer. What five years ago? At this point, it feels like. Um, yeah, it's been a long fucking time. They had that one other one where they 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 kind of put a new one out there, but I that was all again just just. It was still just a teaser. Was, yeah, we, we haven't really had any concrete showing of it. Right, and then uh. Forza Horizon 5 was when? Was that a year or two years ago? Uh, I think it was last year. Or was it last year? Um, those are the only critically acclaimed games from them, yeah. which they're great, but uh, you don't want to hinge that on there. And then the Microsoft Flight Sim, the, those are your only two bangers of like the last like seven years? Come on, man. Oof, yeah. <laughs> Let yeah, me it's see so what... crazy to me, like how, like you said, Forza is now like the pillar that's kind of like holding them up. It's it's so insane to me, especially it being like one of the newer 
uh, franchises, especially amongst like the, the exclusive. Right, and I get it. There is. <coughs> it used. Oh no, uh, no. Forza Horizon Five was twenty twenty one. Was her wait? One did just come out. Forza was... Forza Motorsport came out. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that one's the 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 realistic sim. Forza Horizon Five is like more of the arcadey one, um, which is great. I love I love Forza Horizon series. I actually I, I buy all of them. I play all of them. I like all the Forza games. Honestly, they're all a lot of fun. They like uh, they give me what like why one out of it. I want that uh, not Gran Turismo kind of pisses me off because I feel like it goes a little bit too much into sim and kind of like yeah. too much into being like up its ass sometimes. Sure. Meanwhile, Forza is kind of like. You want this badass car? Go earn some money, get it. You want to drop a V twelve in this bitch? Fuck it, do it. And then like for then Horizon has like the Halo level where you're like you're racing in a warthog <laughs> yeah, with Halo warthog. music. Yeah, yeah so it, it, they both have fun with it, but like we're talking about Microsoft that has like fourteen thousand studios right now, mm-hmm. um, and we're still talking about these same franchises, and all of them are struggling except for Forza. Like that, yeah, I. I I, I think they need to split up and figure out who who's running that stuff. Yeah, and it's like when you look back on the 360 too. 360 had like a lot of indies and like arcade games that kind of carried a lot of the burden for them too. You had games like Castle Crashers. You had your Fat <sighs> Princesses. You had those games that just kind of indie games like, were so fun back then. It was yeah, it was they, exactly they would pop up and be like, oh, you spend ten bucks, you and your boys can uh, pound Mountain Dew all weekend and get down. You know, yeah, it feels like indies on console, have, aside from Nintendo, have been kind of lost. You know, it, it's no, no, they're not, they're not lost. It's just they're that in their like little pockets, like Devolver and shit like that. Well, the, it's 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 not that they're lost. There's just there's so many of them that they all kind of get lost in the sauce. Um, like we could we could look up like Hades, for example, is an indie game that popped up everywhere. Though the thing is, is like. Remember, like back in 360, we had the uh, the Summer of Arcade. Oh yeah! And you would get a highlighted indie game each like each week or something like that, right? There's a yeah. whole indies tab. I remember going to that and just like seeing random cheap ass games for a few bucks and just dropping some money on gamer points. Right, and and, and but then we we think about that. We think about the curation of it. Hey, here's an indie game every week that we've individually curated exclusively on this console. But they don't they don't need that anymore. They don't do that anymore because there's just so much. Like it doesn't matter. They're like you, you see like the, the indie world stuff like that. We'll show you like a bunch of games like that. But there's even sleeper hits, right? Like like I get, I'll, I'll say like Bellatro, right? I did I put a lot of time in that game, but that wasn't a heavily advertised game. That started that game came out. I saw a post about it. I bought it, loved it. But like that was not like one of those summer arcade where you're like, oh, I can't wait for uh for Miss Explosion Man or something because you saw that coming up on the slate, yeah. right? <laughs> You're, you're, uh, so it, it, it's, it's, there's so much choice and no identity to those choices. Limbo was a 360 exclusive, right? Castle Crash was yeah. a 360 exclusive. Fat Prince was a PS3 exclusive. Uh, World of Goo was a WiiWare exclusive, right? Like, we're thinking about those, but now the developer's like, wait a second, I can release on everything and just make all the money? All right. Yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> I feel like Pal World feels the closest to like that kind of era of just like random out of nowhere blow up. And Hell Divers, I think too. Uh, yeah. Pal yeah. Pal World being kind of like it blew up and then and then came it came back to very normalcy. We're like that's about kind of what you expected initially, which is cool. I've never I never even played it yet. I bought it, but I didn't play it. But I was like happy to support because again, I want to support cheaper games. But anyway, I could throw my money at a cheaper game that that satisfied people. Um, yeah right. You just want to live out having sex with Pokemon, so yeah, we all know uh, what it is. yeah, and, and and throwing Pokeballs at actual humans. <laughs> um, but like I, I I I I yeah, indie games carried a lot of that that extra weight. Um, I just think the abundance of choice is just so much that we lose track of what's solid, right? Yeah, uh, we <laughs> we had that one big like big thing to look forward to and then we we just clung on to that but now it's like we either have prior engagement with other games or one game comes out like we're, we talked about yakuza for a while and that game is like you could probably be a yakuza player yakuza and like a dragon gamer and that's all you have to be 
you can literally not play other video games because you have a hundred hour banger coming out once like a year, year, if not twice a year, right? Because like, yeah, li- like oh yeah, all the remasters and everything, remasters, yeah. and then uh, Titan or whatever, uh, the man who erased his name, yeah, and then Ishin, yeah, and all this, like you could literally just play that franchise and you're fine forever. So it's like that. That's where we're at. We're we're not gonna be that person. We're gonna buy everything, but like, that also hinders us. It's like the it's like the blockbuster thing, right? You go to a blockbuster, you have to pick a movie. You go home, you can't change that movie. You can't be like, oh, I don't like this. Let me let me back out and look for another movie. Now you watch that fucking movie. All the way through. When we were kids. You got that one game. If it was a bad game, sorry Johnny, you're gonna learn how to speed run that game with how much you're gonna play that game. But that was great though. Like it was cool dissecting those. Like that that that's the charm of it. Like I I I get jealous every once in a while. Like the mass amount of games. Can you imagine like as a kid having Game Pass, right? Like yeah. part of you is like, damn. But also like I don't think they get the same enjoyment as games we did back then. Like being forced into things, being like pigeonholed into a point where you're like, I don't know what else I could do. Yeah. I just uh, reminded myself. Uh, and I'm, I'm glad to take this podcast off topic and not talk about video games. Have you guys either heard of the Joe Schmo show or Jury Duty? Yeah, no. Joe Schmo. So have you heard of Jury Duty? I've heard of it, but I haven't watched it yet. I've seen a story about it. Like a David. Essay. Yeah. Uh, let me let me tell you about the Joe Schmo show, show first. It is a definitely a 2003 era show. A lot of sex. Oh, yeah. A lot of like dumbass games. It's a reality TV show. All right, you're, I've, I've unsold David. David's like, I don't give a shit at all what you're talking about. I'm gonna sell you on it right now, though. This is all. Everyone on the show is an actor except for one guy. Only one guy is not in on it. So everyone else they're playing this whole show, like out as if it's like uh we have to vote each other out. There's drama. This is and that. But only one guy is not in on it. Everyone else is acting around him, playing this up. There's a team of writers writing in real time. Like, they have a structure, but they have to write in real time to whatever this guy is doing. And this guy, like, derails some shit sometimes where they're like, all right, uh, we have a game where they got to keep their hand on a stripper, on a stripper's body. Uh, last one to remove their hand gets to have the king-size suite in, in the mansion that they're staying in because the whole joke is that they're in a mansion. They're living a life of luxury. Uh and their their thing was we got to get him in his own room so we could have cameras on him right because like easier so they're like all right we'll play it up so the whole story was like we really want the asshole to go far in the game so we're gonna have it we're gonna have the guy's name is Matt we're gonna have Matt versus the asshole and and we're, and we're gonna make it like an epic showdown and then Matt's gonna win out we'll get him in the in the room they before start the game far, before you get too far the asshole is played by rickety cricket from Always Sunny yeah. <laughs> Uh, Kristen Wiig is on that show. It's like one of our first roles. Uh, there's a handful of names. You're like, oh, it's that guy. It's uh, so surreal to watch now. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, and so, all right, showdown's happening, right? And and like and, and Matt's horny, dude. It's funny because the first episodes they were trying to like really just like kind of like it's gonna be funny. It's gonna be a lot of funny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you why this is really ironic in a second. But they're like, this is really funny. We're gonna mess with them a little bit. And he was definitely horny. He's like, dude, these girls, these girls are pretty hot. Cool. It'd be cool if I got with them. He wasn't like gross about it, but dude was like horny. But and they're Little like dummy. they're like, all right, cool. He's got his hand on a stripper. Oh, he, he's gonna be fine. About two minutes in, he's like, All right, that was fun. Takes his hand off, and they're like, What the fuck? And he's like, Yeah, you know what? I kinda want my own room and and, and if I can guarantee being in the laundry room all, all season, that's fine with me. The writers were like, Fuck. All right. <laughs> how do we mix this back now <coughs> so david here's the thing here's the issue where, where it's it it gets you still haven't sold me here's on it. the let me tell you why though the guy is the most genuine sweetest motherfucker on the planet and they didn't really quite account for that so like nope. they, they were like doing this whole voting off thing right and there's this old guy that plays the stereotypical veteran they're like all right his name's earl He's like kind of like he's like he's an old guy. Talks about his time in there. <clears throat> you realize the actors like to live with him, so like they're actually talking to him. Like they're not playing a billion percent in character or something. Like they're, they're talking about him personally, but they had to still like stay in the realm of a character, right? But this old guy, 
he plays he, he talks to the old guy and they apparently they apparently had really close talks like really personal talks to the point where matt kind of saw him as a father figure so when they vote him out he's like the second person out dude matt starts crying <laughs> matt starts crying and the production's like oh fuck oh fuck we made him cry oh fuck the, the nicest guy ever and the guy's the guy's crying he's like man no amount of money is worth this man this is fucked up i can't do this man this everyone's like production all the cast in the background's on fire like oh fuck we can't make him cry anymore next day they're like all right how do we alleviate the pressure the next day they're like all right let's have a funny sumo costume contest i know like they'll push each other out of the ring to make themselves like it'll be funny right ha ha alleviate the mood let's 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 help because matt's still sad they didn't uh really make padding in the sumo thing so round one just pushes kristen wig and she lit she gets her the back of her head so hard that she like is like crying to get out of the suit and they have to send her to the hospital on an emergency because she got hurt and then you look back at matt and matt's crying again <laughs> he's like oh fuck <clears throat> can we get him to stop crying but the dude's sweet like he won the contest unprompted kristen wig came back and he's like hey i won but the 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 whole the whole thing's yours yeah like it was sweet and it's super heartfelt by the end of it the whole cast is like fuck dude this guy's like i want to be this guy's best friend like it was it was really sweet and to piggyback off of that jury duty david is something i think you would like more it's it's a faux jury documentary that again only one guy is not in the loop about uh <laughs> it's like again though they got the sweetest guy of all time to be on it and fucking for example uh they were like trying to fuck with them and be like all right we put his room next to this guy that likes to just make like weird things out of like metal and, and like almost like he likes to make weird limbs or like weird like contraptions out of limbs we want to scare this guy and make him freak out uh the guy saw that guy they had a conversation the next day again unprompted the guy came back with uh, a bug's life and gave it to him. He's like, hey, man, I saw you were making some of this. If you ever seen this movie, there's a character in here that likes to make a lot of contraptions. He reminded me of you. So I think you'd actually really like this, and you'd think it's super cool to find something like that. And like, fuck, he's not scared. He's just really nice. Uh, and I tell you this, David, because as someone that likes writing, they show the production of the writing. It has to be one of the most stressful writing jobs of all time because you are writing ahead of of an anomaly that's trying to break your thing. On jury duty, it's a mis it's it's they get to a point where they have to kind of solve the mystery on themselves. So they put them in like the the they put the jury like in the the crime scene, all that. They come back to the 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 room where they're talking about it, and and dude's like his name is Ronald. Dude's like, all right guys, so we saw this here, we saw this here. There's no way this could happen here dude's like dissecting it like going phoenix right on this and the production's like holy shit he just jumped like four days ahead of us all right cool so they're like they're like on fire having to write <laughs> they're like we cannot keep up with this guy he is he's reading everything ahead of us we cannot write this uh it's it's really cool seeing the production side of it and also just kind of like seeing the chaos and everything uh they at the end of of, of joe schmo show they gave him the prize and all that stuff, right? Like they're like, all right, hey, is this, here's a hundred thousand dollars. Here's all this. Uh, at the end of jury duty, they kind of broke it to him and yada yada. But shout out to that. Uh, Ronald had a month of psychosis uh, because he couldn't discern what was real and what was fake anymore. Uh, James Jesus. in jury duty, James Marston plays himself. <laughs> James Marston just plays being and being asshole James Marston. Uh, and, and but like jury duty was really cool. But like he's like he's like really good friends with James Marsden. So for like a month straight, Ronald had to call James Marsden up person like, hey dude, um, this is this is real, right? Like no no bullshit, no bullshit, it's real. Okay, cool. So he had he had to go to therapy because he was like, yeah. <laughs> Imagine if you like did this thing for three weeks and then like everyone's like, ah, that was fake. Everything that you experienced was fake. That fuck with your mind. That would definitely fuck with your mind a bit. Yeah. yeah but uh, this game show in Japan that kind of like the similar story a little bit different but he had the same issue it fucked him up bad and he has like still going to therapy like nowadays over it yeah uh both fascinating and i think i think the 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 really like the big pull at the end is it 
both both Ronald and and uh, Matt were just really genuine and sweet people. Um, uh, Matt talking about he's like, dude, I'm just some dude they pull off a court and, and playing b ball. Like my house is not not great. I'm a I'm a I'm a pizza delivery dude. Like I don't make much money. All I want is like a house, a girl, and a dog. Like that's all I want in my life, man. So shout out to that dude. That was that was cool. But like both great both great people. I think Joe Schmo show. <clears throat> I think it's fascinating still, especially it just just it's also a relic of its time. Two thousand three, it's very two thousand three. Um, I think you would think jury duty is interesting because they do writers have to like write different scenarios. Like, all right, if Ronald does this, we go to we go to plot plot A. If Ronald does this, we go to plot B. It's 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 pretty interesting to see that side of it. Yeah, I'd be curious, man. It sounds like basically just being a DM in a tabletop game, but uh, yeah, I'd be curious to kind of see the evolution of their process yeah it, it's fascinating dude uh at back you with the sub boys what's up kels he says hi yeah um so i binged both those shows on my on my trip out to <laughs> to california i always had to, i was binge some show like there's always some show i have to binge and, and when i was sick i was i was binging uh i, I watched like gunner tv that's why i know both those shows uh he also watched uh beauty and the geek so I watched I watched a season of that. Uh fantastic. I love I love watching a reaction to that where they run down all the highlights. I'm like, cool. Perfect. Um <coughs> David. Yo. Let's get to it. Uh what'd you get this week? Hell yeah, I got actually a bunch of shit here. Uh I got a few lots of things. Uh they're scattered around currently. Uh, I well, got this lot for a couple of bucks. Go ahead. We got uh, Crimson Skies on PC. We got Delta Force 2 on PC. Star Wars X-Wing for PC. Nice. Nice. Got Titan Quest on PC physical. I uh, got a physical copy of this. I've been wanting this for the uh, collection for a while now, but Phantasmagoria 2. To have that, uh, then we got a bunch of fucking Japanese titles because I've been getting these for like two to three bucks lately. So I'm like, fuck it, why not? I'll fill up the collection. Uh, this is Denki Boosts, fuck something or other. I can't remember the exact title. It's got an English fan translation though, so I know I'll play it at Denki some Kibuko? point. Sure, that's a fighting game. Uh, gotcha. Uh, Gundam Cross Generation Worlds. Uh, this one, I think, also does have a fan translation, so I'll be playing that eventually. Will you? Monster Hunter. Well, yeah, eventually, one day. Monster Hunter Portable Two, because at this point, I've gotten uh, that one came for free with one of the other bundles. At this point, I have almost every Monster Hunter uh, in Japanese on the PSP because I keep getting them as fucking freebies with my other Japanese game purchases. <laughs> I have not purchased a single fucking Monster Hunter for PSP. It has all come to me free. And it's kind of nice. nice. It's weird. Nice. I might honestly just start going for a complete Monster Hunter set at this point. <laughs> Uh, then, let's see what else. We, we got some other uh, fun, weird oddities here. Uh, we got Darling Special Backlash, uh, which was a simple series release originally. Uh, and then it got its own kind of deluxe physical release. Uh, looks like a gay dating simulator. Why not? It was two bucks. Uh, then we got... Oh, fuck. It's like concerto something, but basically it's a piano uh, rhythm game. Uh, me, kind of a means of actually somewhat learning how to play piano, but it's ultimately a rhythm game. Uh, genuinely kind of neat. Uh, distinct art style. I dig it. Uh, this one here is a weird fucking RPG that was actually done by the Nippon uh, Hikio Fuck. God damn it, I can't, I can't, it's a fucking Japanese television station that basically sponsored this, and it's like a weird hybrid of, like, custom Robo and, like, Monster Rancher, it's so fucking weird, uh, this one sadly does not have a English translation, but one day, I will have that game played, uh, will and you? then, uh, 
Yeah, one day. I don't know if I believe you with all these. I think I think a lot of these games are not going to go and play. Why would I buy all these games and never play them, Adrian? Yeah, I wonder. Who would do that? Exactly. You ever? Who would do that? Just let me interrupt you. Someone, someone did a good idea as a video, and I kind of want to just steal that concept from them. They played one hour exactly of ten different games on their on their list of games to play. They were like a bunch of ten, uh, like ten games that they were really like. You're talking Bastion, Py- uh, Pyre, uh, Disco Elysium. They're like, <coughs> I played, I had, ma- I had exactly play one hour, which led me to like after I played ten games, I was like. That's the game I want to play. So he played one hour of each, and then Dead Cells was like, yep, I sunk t- 26 in this to Dead Cells. Um, I feel like you should, for Extra Life, do something similar-ish, but like 15 minutes and randomize your Steam collection and play one 15 minutes. That is kind of what I was doing a bit last year, was one, I, I, I balanced it between doing a bunch of small games that I knew I could just finish and trying out a bunch of shit I've been meaning to get to but hadn't. I think I think just randomize in fifteen minutes and see see what it does to you. No, oh, no, I, I can't because I, I I never get a, I'm never gonna get a feel for anything with just fifteen minutes. Thirty minutes. That's a waste of time. No. You can't. Well, then an hour. But I, I feel like an hour you're gonna get some game that's gonna be trash and you're like ah, for an hour. Maybe an hour. I I think the small anything that was an hour I would rather just back. Uh, get rid of a game in my backlog that is an hour long, and then I put, like, four or five hours in a bunch of other smaller games. I want you to... I, I want to randomize it. I want to, like... I want... Because, <laughs> cause, yeah, the, the video had a, a smart idea, which is something I also want to do, like, right? Like, ten games I really want to do. But, it's like, I want to know... Like, there's, there's... We have so much garbage in our Steam libraries, too. But also, I'm sure there's gonna be some sleeper hits in there that I, I would have never looked at a second time again. So, I'm like, I want to randomize it and just I want to do something like a really quick. Like, what is this game? Eh, all right, cool. I'll mark that down for later. So you're not going to play those day, day games, David. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Well, I'll eventually do it. No, you won't. Anyways, All-Star Pro Wrestling on PS2. Wonderful. Uh, and then let's see what else we got here. Uh, speaking of uh, the PlayStation 2, Heroes of Might and Magic. Got that one for PS2 now. And then... The only other thing left, I'm just kind of double checking around, make sure I don't forget anything. No, uh, Touch Detective Three. Oh, Mid- I was waiting I'm to get that. To pick that up. Yeah. Uh, Epacky in the chat asks, "Kels, be honest, isn't Dave, isn't Big Dave dummy thick?" Hell yeah! Oh, we already knew that. Big dude. <laughs> All right, Kels, inaugurable. What'd you get? Yeah. Um. Luckily, I had something waiting for me in the mailbox today as Let's soon go. as I came home from work. Um, the old Persona 4. Nice. Yeah. Good shit. Finally good came shit. in. It only I, took like eight months or whatever. I hey, wanted to I'm get... still a year later waiting on a bunch of my limited run shit. <laughs> I wanted to get a Persona 4 uh, uh, arena on, on physical. It's only available Japanese, which is fine. But the issue is they the Japanese... Uh, version does not come with English voiceover. Correct. Only so, in a fucking library can you like listen to it in like catalog. Not not yeah, that's that's dumb. So I bought yeah, I so, bought it digitally, uh, but I'll probably buy it physically because I buy it digitally for like a few bucks, but that's annoying. I think the three hundred and sixty version is backwards compatible though, isn't it? Yeah, but you see my my Persona collection on Switch. Oh. It's great. It's a great collection, David. He's not wrong. That's why I got four on Switch. What <laughs> asshole collects for the Switch? Yeah, I wonder. Who would truly? Yeah. What what <laughs> asshole buy Switch games? Hmm. <laughs> Anything else and on that? That uh, what you got? Yeah, my other pickup was this variant cover for the old Ultimate X Men number one. Oh, Peach good shit. Good one. Yeah, like Peach that. Momoko killing it. Loving it. Peach and Moko only know from Marvel yeah. Snap because they have they have banger variants on there. Well, uh, she did. Uh, was it Demon? I think it's called Demon Days. It's a Marvel imprint comic that they had. Really cool <laughs> art style. It's like uh, she's bringing manga, 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 manga to uh, to the Western comic style, and it's really interesting so far. Ultimate X Men because <laughs> so far there's no X Men, but there are a mutant. There's few mutants that you're following and it's completely in like her style 
So it's really weird when held up to like how Ultimate Black Panther and Ultimate Spider Man are looking right now. So it makes me wonder huh. how they're all going to intermingle. Because hmm. she has like a really, really, really cool, like almost scratchy, kind of like hand drawn look to it. Right. Um, cool. All right. Uh, David, much to your chagrin because I told you I got, I got Unicorn, Unicorn uh, Overlord. Uh, that game is ever going on sale. So, yeah, I saw that. I got pissed. Uh, it's like half off on some retailers right now. Yep, I told you. So, like, are you ever going to play it? I probably won't yeah. touch that one. Yeah, <laughs> I, I imagine after. I love Vanilla Wear. Yeah, after the Sentinels will probably be be hankering for some more. Though. I hear it's an ogre battle. Uh, spirits, spirit successor. So shout out oh, to that. Yes. Um, I got this. It happened. I was uh. I was looking around. Mercari's like, hey, here's a friend, free $10 off. And I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time I look for this. I looked for the thing I wanted. It was upcharged because I missed out on it. I'm like, whatever. I, I lowballed them a little bit. Not too much, but low, like 20% off. They accepted that. Slapped the on the $10. So it's like I really didn't overpay. I maybe paid like, I don't know, maybe $10 extra than this, which is fine with me. But it's done. It's over. I got Pyra and Mithra. So the entirety of the Smash Amiibo lineup is done. Yeah. It's over. If you had asked me over 10 years ago, or was it no, almost 10 years ago, nine years ago, hey, you're going to be collecting these fucking figures for nine years, I would have probably just not started to begin with. I'd be like, all right, <laughs> now I'll, I'll grab the funny little Mega Man. That's all I need, and then I don't know what I don't know what got into me, and I started buying more and more, and I was like, "Well, I might as well go over the full collection." Nine and a half years later, it's done, it's over, and they're all in a box. <laughs> they're all in a fucking box because I I need I always want once I once I finish the collection, I always told myself, "I'm gonna I'm gonna have to uh, make it like a nice like shelf or something whenever I get myself like a house, make a nice shelf." Put some put the amiibo up there like the way because I always wanted to. I've, the only reason I ever I ever got into it was because like it was always reminding me of the Smash Melee and 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 sixty four when they would drop the the trophies and Master Hand would play with yeah. them right. I'm like yeah, I was gonna live out that dream all the way. And seventy four characters and on top of other things like Steve and Alex and what um, the three different Game and Watches, uh, the different clouds, the different bayonettas, different Corins. I'm finally done. So that's good. I'd never have to look at Amiibo again. It's done. Did you ever get Sora? Yo, yeah. He's big chilling right here, actually. Nice. <laughs> I was like wondering. You never told me anything else about that. Yeah, no, I, I did get him. So yeah, I must have forgotten to show him off, though. So yeah, so I got Sora. Banjo was the only one out of him that I was like, Oof. I had to I had to pull myself away. Uh, where's my Banjo at? I still need to grab Kazuya when I can find him again. He was up, like, not that long ago, right? Except for off yeah, I forgot too. about it is the problem. Because I, I, <laughs> I got into a habit where I was buying a bunch of them, and then I'm like, nah, I really don't want to grab them unless I'm actually going to use them for a game that makes use of them. And because of that, I'm like, oh, I stopped caring. That's fair. Uh, it's done to be... It's nice to be over, though. I... Uh, that's a complete collection, David. I no longer, you know, we talked about complete collections before. It's done. It's true. It's moving on. It's over. You have any any big uh, complete collections on that side, uh, Kels? Um, I have a few. I wouldn't. It depends on how you define complete. Because I have some, like I have like my vinyls, cassettes, and stuff like that. Like I'll have like a run of an artist, but it won't be like every variant of their vinyl, you know. Oh yeah, like, uh, it's considering some some people put like twenty some different vinyl variants. Like I'm over that. Yep, yep, yeah. No, there's a few of them. I have uh, their discography, and then there's a few of them, like one or two that I have where they're all signed too. So top Ooh. three vinyls that you got that you you personally. Like, not talking like value wise. Where are your top three favorites? Mm, that one's kind of hard. It, I'd probably have to mix it up a little bit because um, I have. So I have everything from like Dua Lipa to like Norwegian black metal bands. Um, 
All right, so, all right. I like how you guys both on there, two opposite ends. <laughs> right, exactly. I have to hit both sides. Um, there's a band that I really like. It's a metal band uh, named Lorelei, and they had a really good metal album that came out like first years of college that I love called Lore of Lies, and I just recently got that one on vinyl. They've been broken up for years, and then uh, just randomly came out like, "Hey guys, we're just pressing." really cool like red vinyl so i got that that was really cool and then i have a few other bands that kind of did the same thing where like they put out vinyls and then like years later now that it's cool to get vinyls they did like a limited repressing i was able to hop onto that um say anything did a repressing of their is a real boy it's like one of my top albums so that was really cool nice yeah um yeah, I I wanted to get some of the, like the lo-fi bo- the lo-fi, lo-fi boy or lo-fi girl ones, but those ones kind of come out pricey. Yeah. Um, especially with shipping, it always kills me shipping. I'm like, all right, you know what? Forty dollar vinyl, I'll bite that, and then like twenty five dollars shipping. I'm like, no, now I'm now I'm out. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a handful of vinyls I, I like just putting on on a, uh, uh, rotation. I need to get myself one of those like fancy vinyl cleaners though, because having since I got a Sir Sir Juice. Uh, there's so much fur just around at any given moment. So, and cleaning vinyls is the worst. So I want to get one of those like fancy like water ones where you can just like rotate it in the water. Um, so I don't play too much vinyls currently because of that. But um, one of my favorite like dates to do is we have a we have a record shop here. So my favorite thing to do is like just go to a record shop, agree on a vinyl to buy, bring it back, play it, knock out some food, cook something with that. And that's that's a good time. There's something just like. Again, that that physical media of, of being stuck on that, right? It's not like some, it's not like some playlist on Spotify. It's not like a YouTube like like video playing. It's like you are actively choosing to play this. You have to actively get up and flip the the record. Um, the one I'm still wanting to play the most, but I am terrified to do that. Is that uh that six hour album? I forget what it was. Oh yeah. yeah. I'm blanking on the name right now. Hold on. Uh, kind of six hour album about dim- have a real fun time. literally already <laughs> popped up everywhere at the end of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah by uh, the caretaker. Um, those vinyls were expensive. I remember that that was, but that was like one of the ones I've been, that was like on my list of like one day I'm just going to, just going to sink it. And sure enough, I did. Um, but I want to do that all in one go. You can't, you can't break that up. You gotta, you gotta power through it. You gotta commit a fucking day to it. Yep, and be horribly depressed by the end of it. Um. So also, I mentioned I went to L.A. I, I mentioned this when the game's gone by. I got my lunar tear near hand tattoo. Uh, super happy with that. That came out pretty well. Um, speaking of my trip, has anyone seen Godzilla and Kong? No. <sighs> now. David, you said it with a nope. Tell me you're not going to watch it at all. No, I will eventually. Okay. Kyle, you into the MonsterVerse stuff? Yeah, I like it decently enough. It's uh, it's just not one of those things like I'm rushing out to go see it. Like, I'll catch a matinee of it probably like this weekend, next weekend, something. I want to, I, I might destroy the podcast next week in case it's still there because I want to watch it in D-Box, which is like the rotating seats. And it's cheap on Tuesdays. $10 tickets on Tuesdays for the moving seats. So I'm like, I kind of want to do that. Uh, I might do that next week if it's still there. But um, uh, watched it in Dolby, which I don't, we don't. I don't have Dolby screens here where I'm at, so that is a treat. When I am out of state, usually in like Arizona or California or Colorado, I'll go do those those Dolby screens. Those are the, those are the really nice, the, the best of the line screens you can get. Um, seats great are great, sound great sound, amazing sound. Um, so watched uh, watched that in Dolby. Um, uh, end up just booting up my AMC A list again because uh, it was cheaper to get the 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 subscription than it was for the actual ticket itself. The ticket itself was like ticket itself was like twenty five bucks. The membership Jesus. itself was like twenty two, twenty three. So I was like, all right, book the booked A list. Then uh, since me and the girlfriend both bought the because there, there's a, there's one AMC out here, but so far away and it's kind of it's kind of lame. Um, and so we booked it again when we were on the way back. We stopped in Phoenix. And we're like, all right, we got to make most use. We got we got to make use of the subscription what we have for the month because we paid twenty three dollars for it. So uh, we booked a, a Dolby showing for Monkey Man in Phoenix. Monkey Man, fantastic. Uh, you guys know what that is? 
Yeah, no. I wanted to see that one. Dave Patel, John Wick style movie. Um, hmm. Slums, rags to riches kind of thing where dudes like, I'm gonna get my ass kicked and just make as much money I can to get revenge for for my family. Great movie, great action, good times. Loved it. Um, highly recommend that. But uh, Godzilla and Kong and Dolby was incredible. Um, I've been pretty eh on the MonsterVerse. I think too much people. I don't care about people. I want to see giant, giant, giant CG monster punch other giant CG monster. Right. Um, but they've been progressively going towards where they should be. Um, and yeah, I think uh, Godzilla and Kong, I think, is is on the verge of nailing where where it needs to be. Where it's like, all right, we gotta do the people thing. I understand. We got it. We gotta have some sort of reason to drive. And maybe I will reconsider it because I didn't even realize they made shows about this. I realized Monarch. Yeah, on uh, Apple. Yeah, Monarch, yeah. and then uh, I forget what the other show is. Um, so people were listing off all these kaiju. That I'm like, who the fuck is that kaiju? I've never heard of that kaiju. It's because they're talking about him in the show. Um, but it's been kind of it's been cool to see that kind of be a collective universe now. Um, and bro, you see that shot in the trailer. It hits a little differently on the big screen, but there's something magical about like. Kong got his ass kicked. I need to chime in. I need to chime in Godzilla. I know, and, and it's like the whole cliche, I hate you, but the enemy, my enemy is my friend. But man, that shot of the ground, you he, you see the pink of Godzilla, just the roar. Godzilla just tags in. He's like, all right, I got this. And then Kong right behind him, like, let's go, dude. And let me tell you, there's a shot. There's a shot of Godzilla and Kong versus the other side. And does that really cool like, it does like the almost like the uh, the Civil War sh- shot, splash page. Yeah, yeah, it does a splash <laughs> page of like I don't want to spoil it in case anyone out there is still watching it, which is fair. But like the of the of the, the opposition is all I'm gonna say. It does that shot of both them just like right there. It slows down for a second, and I'm like, that's the money shot right there, dude. <laughs> like they did not spoil that that shot. It was not in the trailers, uh, and it it's just so good. There's something magical with that moment. We're like, all right, dude, they're 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 rolling together. They're like, we gotta take care of this together. And you just know, like, now that we're past that point of like, oh, you're you're my arch enemy, and now we're like, all right, well, we gotta team up every once in a while. All right. There was also uh, uh, <laughs> there's there's a gag in there where Godzilla uh, sleeps in the Rome Coliseum. I like, kind of curls up, and that's how he sleeps. And it's kind of a funny little oh. Uh, kind of moment it it sits. <laughs> yeah and uh the director's like yeah i just wanted to make godzilla like my cat for a little bit <laughs> i'm like yeah that's fair that's that's funny respectable yeah uh let's see if everybody says uh i really i really need to watch that in civil war civil war is on my list i need to watch civil war uh it is just monarch and then i saw one thing in the trailer where kong is trying to be friendly towards godzilla and he just hits him anyway yeah there's that moment where it, it, spoilers there's that moment where they had that moment where like hey and then they just got to duke it out real quick because we're not we're not friends. We don't like each other, so we got to fight. All right, we good? All right, cool. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go fight it together. Um, yeah, I have such like a love-hate relationship with the MonsterVerse stuff because so much of it is really my shit and so cool. Like, King of the Monsters, like King Ghidorah and all the imagery and stuff. such a good one. Fucking A. Ooh, so hmm. good. Like, how they cooking. shot a lot of that fight, oh, so good, but then they just cut away. And yeah. that's yeah. like, people. what are you doing? Yeah, it's like, the, the cool shit's happening right there. Just let me watch it longer. But, and then you get to, uh, what, it was Versus, that was the next yeah. one, right? Yeah. And then that one had some really cool shit building off of, like, King Ghidorah going into Mecha Godzilla spoilers, and, like, all the conflict there, and, like, and then you just flash right back to the humans, like, uh, what's his name? Lannister daddy, like, causing issues with Monarch and uh, Apex here's, or whatever. It's like, I don't here, care. Here's the thing. As a lifelong Godzilla fan, <laughs> I, I have never understood the argument of, like, Ugh, the people. You always have to have a human element there. That is the nature of Godzilla, is Godzilla is a reflection of whatever horror is happening to humanity of its period. Sometimes it gets goofy. Well, like when we start getting into the era when Godzilla has a son, 
you know, and or when he's fighting fucking J- Jaguar or sh- the original Godzilla versus Kong, where he's shoving a fucking tree gun down his goddamn gullet and fucking rocket jump kicking him. But uh, like my whole issue yeah. is like with Shin Godzilla and then minus one. So recently, it's like we've had it done so well. You, you know, yes. here's 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 why. And I think it's cool. People have people been mentioning this, and I think it's actually cool. Godzilla is literally running two different shows right now in cinema, which is, I think, fantastic, right? Godzilla minus one, terrifying, right? Like, it's really that, yeah. that like, horrendous, holy shit. This is what could legitimately happen, right? Whereas, yeah, like, whereas like, yeah, Monster Versus is, is the the Americanized, fuck yeah! Godzilla's like, I've got some box gloves on, let's fucking go! And everyone's cheering for Godzilla in those ones. And we're all like fucking terrified of Godzilla and the other ones. I think that's a cool duality right now. It's kind of a, it's got in cinema, and they're both balancing, right? Like they're both doing well, which is great. Um, I think that, I uh, yes, there has to be a human element to ground the idea of this, but like the Americanized version is obviously the fighting, like like showcase CGI, like let let's let's big battle, big fun sort of deal. So I think, and they have been progressively getting better at that. So, uh, uh. Godzilla and Kong, um, there's like a solid 15 minutes of no humans. That's all just raw CGI, but like really well done. Where it's like you get story and and backstory of Kong with just facial animations, which is fucking incredible. Like it nails it for 15 minutes, no fucking humans, just pure Kong dealing with the Hollow Earth and seeing how his life is going and like what he's dealing with down there. And that's all it is, and it's fucking great. Um, and I think we're getting slowly a little bit more into that because I think what they should do is what that what because I heard good things about Monarch, but like let's let Monarch kind of be the human thing that you want to do with lies, and let's kind of like wean out like we'll keep it in there because it has to always be something right like, there has to be, um but like let's wean out the human element a little bit more in the monsterverse and balance it out with that, and give us the big fun fights that we all really want there because I think that 15 minutes of, of Kong just doing his thing sells it on the whole fact that. This could just be a lot of that, and they could do it well. Um, yeah. And Minus One has a a shows that there is a world with very human elements that we can rock with Godzilla, and that does good. So it's not just about, like, we don't want humans with big Godzilla. It's that we don't want humans with the big, dumb Godzilla fun fights. We do want the human elements with the big, scary Godzilla that's going to destroy the world sort of deal. Yeah, the cool thing about Monarch, too, that I really, like, I haven't watched it all. I've seen, like, one and a half episodes. But they really, like, embrace the Japanese side of, like, the whole Godzilla, not necessarily mythos, but, like, ancestry, I guess. Because they really Mm -hmm. embrace and bring over a whole lot of, like, Japanese-American or Japanese-born actors to come over and kind of play big, pivotal roles as scientists or... (coughs) Yeah, I want to watch it. I've been intrigued. Yeah. Um, let me go through April Burning stuff real quick and we'll keep going with this. Um, well, I watched Godzilla, uh, the first Godzilla of the MonsterVerse thought it was good, but very little monster action I felt like, which is fair. Early on, they, they it's definitely leans more human than, than that Halo drop though in the first Godzilla. Gareth Edwards killed so good, dude. Whenever you hear the theme, just it's so good. Uh, when monsters show up like they did in, uh, and, uh, why am I blanking on that? Mon- what's mutos mudos yeah that's what they refer to as the, the giant monsters ass okay but the so monsters show up like the mudo i oh, like the mudo i missed that book uh it was amazing uh david was one kaiju you want to see in the monster verse but it has not shown up yet there's two and the i'm gonna do one for the japanese and one for uh I, the monster verse specifically the monster verse i want more Dumb, goofy crossovers. And there's one crossover we still have not Ultraman. gotten with Godzilla. No, that would be fun, though. I would love uh, that. I would love there that. is one kaiju crossover that is still yet to officially happen. We need Gamera to cross over. I, I would love to see Gamera, especially in the Monsterverse specifically. Uh, I would absolutely adore having that happen uh gamera friend to all uh show up and fucking throw hands with godzilla uh but for japanese godzilla that has had a lot more of that good horror element to it again 
Uh, the one I would love to see come back from Godzilla's past is Destroya. Yeah. Destroya was fucking gave a statement. Um, just showing up, killing Godzilla's son is like, what you got to do about asshole? I, that whole film is just fucking yeah, they, they didn't want to do more destroy it. They, they've been talking about that. Destroy is like one they're trying to hit with Monsterverse even bigger. I, I don't trust them to do destroy a well in Monsterverse. I will say. I absolutely don't. I will say. Uh, it, say it's too fucking Michael Bay. I will say that I, I think uh, my favorite thing that's come out of Godzilla and Kong is I love the resurgence of Godzilla and Mothra fan art together. It yes. just it's been popping up all over my feeds and I'm for it. It's like I, I saw I was a drawing of Mothra saying, Do you really like me? And Godzilla's wearing a number one Mothra shirt fan, has like three different Mothra plushies and Mothra posters on his wall. I love it. It's it that that's my, my favorite my favorite ship. It's so cool. The only one I would want to see from some more legacy stuff that I don't think we've seen, because I, I haven't watched the monarch uh, stuff either yet. Uh, but I think Biolante would That's actually what do Ape really well. just said right now. Biolante is the one I kept hearing. Yeah, I Biolante is one that a lot of people shit on, but I feel like it's honestly gotten better with age. Uh, I get why people don't like Biolante, uh, just Which because of the way it ends. Uh, that was the uh, plant monster that was based off of like uh, nuclear waste and nuclear toxins. So more of like a po- anti-pollution message than it was anything else. Uh, and a lot of people hated it just because of the confrontation between Godzilla and Biolante. Uh, but I feel that especially in the world of global warming, uh, as I feel like most people at this point, uh, unless they are just so hardcore out of touch with reality, have accepted the dangers uh, and the reality of global warming. Uh, I feel that the MonsterVerse could do a fun job of going ahead and retreading Biolante. I agree. Sure. That'd be cool. I think that'd be really conducive to like some cool body horror shit too, right? Yeah. Um, fair. I think if I were to pick, it would be like not Godzilla related. Uh, I would love to see the Jaegers or something like make a crossover into it. Get us Ooh, some, that'd be uh, Pacific Rim. Man, if Pacific Rim two didn't suck ass, I'd be so right. happy. I'd be so excited for a lot of things. It, <laughs> so Godzilla one of the biggest disappointments, like in dragons. movies. Let's go. It's so crazy. Um, and then Ultraman. Let's get Ultraman in there. Why not? Mm-hmm. It'd be so It'd fun. Be cool. I don't know why. Well, be... Imagine him in the MonsterVerse, just like, what the fuck? <laughs> Ultraman's here. <Yeah. laughs> Dude, I'd be the one in the theater popping up the most. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, technically, it's possible over in Japan, right? Because Hideki Anno did Shin Godzilla yeah, he, and Shin yeah, Ultraman. He, so. and, sh- and you know, fuck it, throwing Kamen Rider as well, because <laughs> he did that one as well. <laughs> fuck it. Ultraman would be wild if, if they added him to the MonsterVerse. Yeah, it'd be so funny. I would lose my goddamn mind if Ultraman just showed up there. And that needs to be one of the. That needs to be a post credit, dude. That was a post credit. Holy shit, dude! My mind's I getting my blown. Introduction to Ultraman. It was like uh, those Saturday morning cartoons, like the Fox WB for kids. They randomly mm. slotted in Ultraman, and I had no fucking clue what was going on. I just remember watching, and be like, "All right, <laughs> this is like Spider. This is like a, a Power Rangers on crack. I don't know what's going on." I. I remember I, I got I got the Blu-ray of Ultraman. I remember there was a my 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 old friend from my work. She's super into like anime and stuff like that. Shout out to her. I still I still haven't seen uh, Demon Slayer. Then she gifted me like the first two seasons on Blu-ray. Nice. <laughs> God bless her. She's Good still she's, she's still a friend of mine. <laughs> uh, but I got that uh, for uh, I got that for herself, and I was like, hey, if you want to watch this, I mean, she's like, what? And she didn't know what Ultraman was. I started she's like. That was goofy. I'm like, holy shit. The the fucking weeb thinks that's goofy. That's how you know Ultraman is extremely goofy. Uh, Avery says, my intro to Ultraman was a old, very old Godzilla fighting game, and he was in it. Mm, Hell yeah. That's cool. Dude, a Gotcha Destroy All Monsters thing would be amazing right now. All right, I'm going to throw this out here. Monsters. Throw it. Uh, in general, just because we're on, uh, we're solely just drifting into Tokusatsu at this point. Uh, if y'all haven't seen Karate Robo Zabagar, 100% fucking recommend. Uh, it was like a 2008 film. 
Uh, and it is a love letter to an older kind of uh, tokusatsu series from the 70s. And it is equal parts just fucking dark and apocalyptic, but at the same time being absurd and hilarious. Uh, the whole premise is this dude is a hero, uh, basically trying to avenge his brother. Uh, he fights with his motorcycle, which transforms into a karate robot. Uh, but it does a shit ton of deconstruction of, like, tokusatsu and Power Rangers S tropes. Uh, but it, it gets so weird and goofy with it, but at the same time gets super fucking dark and depressing at the same time. It's just a weird tonal whiplash. It's just such a fun experience. Mm. So that reminded me. So uh, this weekend, actually a couple things uh, happened. I want to, I want to do that. I'm going to keep this page up. Did I, did I mention on the podcast how, how I, I fucked over my smash esports team? No, no, <laughs> Okay, this is my most egregious blunder as a coach ever, and it, I hope it remains that way because it is an extreme blunder. Uh, earlier this season, I, had, I we, we played against team. We were up 2-1. I have a player that could have beat anyone on that team easy. I was burned out off a couple hours of sleep. One of those days I was like extremely like on, on low. like I was tired and, and stressed, and I just did not send that player in. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, if I could take that back, I would. What fucked us over is because like they did seating weird, which I do not agree with. They seated by by different regions in order to like not have like our city be predominant on there or whatever. But they seated it by different cities or by different regions, and because of that, my city being the biggest in the state got uh the the top region. Therefore, whoever's top seed on that one got first seed. So that could have been ours. Mm-hmm. But we lost to that team. Therefore, they got first seed. Now, they stacked it up. So, the best undefeated team in the state right now got second seed. The the team that, that got second place in finals last year to us, that beat us in finals of, of this last season, got third seed. And because we didn't get first seed, we got fucked and we got like like fifth or sixth seed, so our run starting tomorrow. So tomorrow I I know if if if, if we're okay or not. Tomorrow we play we play at a high school uh, nearby, which is not the best. But I told I told uh, in tournaments I'm like do not sleep on them though. Like always play in the moment, and then we move on to the next. But we have two games back to back. One against that team, which we're confident against. Next one is grand finals of last year to get into in person play in in person finals. So Jesus Christ, and whoever wins that plays the undefeated team of the season to get into grand finals. Holy fuck! My and and that's my fault. That's my fault because if I had just if I had just like said, "All right, best player, go win this game for us," we would have had first seed and had top side of the bracket and avoided the chaos fire of the bottom side of the bracket right now. But I didn't. So because of me being burned out one specific day, now one team from Grand Finals last year won't even get in the in person. And we have to play two games back to back. So we play a game at three. Whoever wins that, play it, it, if we win, it's straight up Grand Finals rerun of last year. Whoever wins that gets in person in, in two weeks, which is fucking oh my god. My my uh so I'm I'm like I'm like on both ends right now. I'm like, all right guys, like I want to win this, like of course, right? Because especially because like a few of my players are retiring because they're like they're seniors and they're really good. And I'm like, all right, I would love, I want the run back. I want to go back in person because that was great. And then in fact, our Splatoon team just made it in in person today. They had a massive upset against the best team of the of the state, and they they sent them home, which is good. But I was like, all right, I want I want to be there as well. But I'm like, I get it. They're like our brackets fucked. If we lose, I I'm proud of you guys. Like we 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 fought hard and we lost to hopefully a good team right but also in the same token too winner mentality if you win the fucking tournament you're the best team meaning that you should be every single person there anyway so like yeah fuck it right like that's what i'm gonna tell him like yolo let's go in let's fucking just, let's destroy this bracket and in theory if we beat round two and three 
in theory, Grand Finals is actually easy because that's not a team that we were threatened by at all the whole entire season. So, fuck it. Let's just let's just think that way. So, knock on wood for us tomorrow. Tomorrow is going to be probably the most intense day of esports I've I've had. Uh, just going into it because the team that that was in Grand Finals with us last year that that we got to play again that beat us in, in the fall they three owed us pretty clean and just like kicked our ass and just like walked away from it. So I'm like, all right, so that, that's our redemption run. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta really prove ourselves there. Um, but yeah, so that that's that. Speed of competitions. Uh, our state had the film fest this this uh, last Friday and Saturday, and uh, you were saying that remind me. One of my favorite films there was this film based on D and D, which is funny because it would had a twist to it. Um, but <laughs> one of my, one of my favorite gags now ever which they nailed i think i wish they did more of it they they they, they could have just gag like four times in the whole thing but they didn't the gag was uh one guy's there he's like i gotta go home i gotta go home early i almost be home because I got, I got soccer in the morning They're like all right we gotta play our campaign let's do this so they they drop them into the game and then there's like a shot of them like in like like cardboard like like swords and whatever like okay it's cute and then uh an npc comes in he's like who goes there you guys are saying like you guys have to go to this, this, and then one of the kids just jumps in the front. Fireball! And he's like, and they come back to the table and like, the heck, you can't just you can't just kill the NPC. The NPC's there to tell you what to do. Like that's the whole point. He's like, well, I cast fireball, and then it just hard cuts to black. Ned rolled a twenty and killed the NPC. Hard cut back to the to the in the game, and there's just a a, a corpse in the ground, and the kids walk over it. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, that was a solid gag. That was pretty good. I was like, you guys should do that a lot more because that was a solid gag. Uh, funny times. D and D, David. One day we'll do it, right? Yeah, or tabletop in general, not necessarily D and D, but uh, yeah, one day I will get you and whoever else wants to fucking do it and do a tabletop. <sighs> Dude, it's it's the commitment aspect. I get the one shot things, but those aren't as cool as as. as as a campaign. I feel like I'd be a good dungeon master though. I think you'd have a lot of fun with it. I think I, I think I'm I'm insane enough to just like throw the most obscene things randomly and keep it going. Maybe. Uh now that we talked about everything we bought and it's been an, an hour and a half, what everyone play this week? Dave, what'd you play? Hell yeah, I've been playing more FF seven rebirth. Uh I am almost fucking done the game. I'm in sh- the I'm halfway through chapter eleven right now. There's three more chapters after this one. Have you hit the Holy slowdown fuck. part? <laughs> oh my god! A, I heard there's a slowdown part with a certain party character at some point around there. Yeah, I, I haven't gotten to it quite yet, um, <laughs> but it's interesting the way they because a lot of rebirth has of course been about like all right now that we're getting more of the party what else is going to be different from base seven and there has been a lot of interesting story beats that have been tweaked or modified uh it's hard to talk about like going into too much spoilers but i like that they really don't pull punches in terms of like really exploring the character interactions further. Uh, there'll be a lot of times throughout the game where someone pulls another character aside, like, yeah, this ain't how this fucking happened at all. Like, I don't remember this at all. And it's like, oh, we're starting right away with this kind of being a thing, or something will come up and a character will be like, oh, we're gonna go to this place, and someone will be like, what do you mean we're going to that place? And they're like, yeah, so there's this thing that's actually there. It's like, oh, we're just introducing that element now, I guess. Uh, so it, it's it's unique how they've done it. The, there's some characterization changes that I kind of don't like. Uh, the first one, the, the, so far for me, like the biggest one actually weirdly is with Red 13. Uh, one element kind of bothered me, but it doesn't as much now. Uh, but the part that does still bother me is how they've kind of shamed his relationship with Bugenhagen. Uh, in original seven, he calls him grandfather and they kind of have like that, like sage elder slash young mentor kind of vibe to each other. 
they don't really have that in this one and it feels kind of lost like you've just kind of removed a certain kind of familial attachment away from red's character um so that, that, that was kind of a weird choice but uh, it's interesting i i still haven't gotten to one of the more frustrating parts which is uh apparently i guess in chapter 13 side quests open up everywhere so it's just one big fucking backtracking mission to do all the additional new side quests and for my understanding chapter 14 they basically pull a final fantasy 14 and that you basically have to set aside two hours to just do it because there's two things you actively do, but then there's like a legitimately an hour and a half of cutscenes. <laughs> and I remember FF14 uh, pulling this shit quite a bit where I'm like, oh, okay, we're going to go into a cutscene here, sit down, and a hour later, fuck, this, is a, this isn't a cutscene, this is a fucking cut movie, what the fuck? Uh, so yeah, I, I guess that's a, a large portion of fucking chapter 14, so... Um, yeah, I'm just about to get Vincent, so I, I'm excited to see that whole interaction. I'm really anxious to see how that works now, because especially after seeing like how Yuffie worked um, and how she got introduced, it's going to be really interesting to see how Vincent gets introduced, seeing as how he's like also one of the optional original party members. Well, I kind of have a guess, because the way they seem to set it up is it's basically they're going to just accidentally stumble across him <laughs> just accidentally unleash a vampire <laughs> yeah basically uh it's not really much of a spoiler but of course as you would expect you end up at nimbleheim uh but the reason you're there is actually because kate sith is like bro i need to start getting some fucking data on uh shinra's operations and everyone's like yeah fuck you you spy which that's actually one thing i do really appreciate uh that they change it was right from the beginning no one fucking trusts kate sith barely at every opportunity is like you are double crossing little shit and he's like nah i'm just a little cat meow don't don't worry about me bro and Barry's like no you you were made by shinra you're gonna fucking turn on us i'm waiting for it to happen so I appreciate that right from the get-go. They're like, no, we can't fucking trust you. What do you mean you're just going to join us? No, fuck off. You are a spy. Um, so far, but... I really enjoyed that. I've enjoyed, like, how apprehensive they are to new people, like to Yuffie and to yes. Kate Smith and stuff. That's really cool. I enjoy that. It's, it seems more realistic, especially after all the shit that they've gone through together. Agreed. Uh, it, it, it's been a fun dynamic with a lot of that. Uh, but... Basically, Kate's like, yeah, we need to find out some information about Shinra. And I know that there's a terminal I can log into here. And so, of course, where, do, where are they going to find that terminal over in Shinra Mansion? And they're like, all right, well, where do we find this terminal? He's like, well, I guess we'll go looking for it. So I'm like, oh, they're just going to stumble across Vincent looking for this fucking terminal. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm still enjoying it. The... Uh, I've actually hit a, a interesting difficulty challenge uh, in that uh, I, I've come across my first optional boss I can't fucking face roll. Odin is a bastard. Uh, and the main reason why is he has four stages to his fight and each stage behaves entirely differently and it's kind of neat. But they gave him a parry mechanic and I can't figure out for the fucking life of me how the parry mechanic is triggered. Like, obviously, I know if I attack, he's going to parry. But there's no hell for when he wants to parry. It's just sometimes you'll be doing an attack, and then it's like, fucking nope, and then you just don't get to attack. There's no, like, stance he enters into where it's like, I'm going to parry you if you do something. There's no, like, warning message. Uh, and it's frustrating because of the way that the Odin boss fight works is that there's a countdown timer for when he's going to use Sensenzuken. And so it's either going to be you face roll him and he never gets a chance to use the ability and instant kill your party. Or he's going to go ahead and get a certain amount of hits on you and then it's just inevitable he's going to do it. 
So the idea of the fight is you're actually supposed to basically play tag with him. Uh, be hyper aggressive for a short amount of time, then run away. Hyper aggressive, run away. But then that's where I'm like, I don't understand where I'm supposed to fucking keep an eye out for his parry. And if you look up guides on this fight, so I'm like, fuck it. I, I'm going to cave. I want to see what other people are doing. Everyone's just like, go fucking aggro, bro. Just, uh, just wait for an opportunity and just use your attacks. I'm like, cool, but why is no one talking about this goddamn parry mechanic? Because this is the only thing fucking me up. is trying to figure out what triggers his need to parry my attacks. Is Odin a Chadley fight? Or is he like an yeah. open world? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, he's a Chadley fight and he's like the last summon you get. Mm -hmm. All the other ones, no problem. Even did uh, most of them on their full powered version. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're genuinely fun fights. Had a lot of fun with them. Uh, but this is just the one fight so far where I'm like, nope, fuck that. And it's because of the fact that I have hit a fight where on normal difficulty, I'm like, nope, fuck this. I know I have zero interest in playing hard mode. Thus, I have zero interest in doing anything with regards to the fucking 100%ing uh, this game. Interesting. Anything hey, else you can play, David? Uh, nope, that's all I really have time for is that. Uh, and then as soon as I get that, I can move on to other shit. Uh, before I jump ahead, want to read first things that the one shot I did, my whole team died to a vampire. Hell yeah, it's a good way to end it. Right. Uh, Cal, what have you been playing? Yeah, so, um, pretty much I'm on the same wave with David. Been playing some more Final Fantasy VII Rebirth yeah. and, um, played a little bit of Tekken. I've been trying to, like, solidify a schedule, like, get in, like, an hour at least of Tekken get in lab a little bit and practice and then get some online matches in just so I can kind of keep it Evo. of it. Right, right. Exactly. I need to prep for Evo mm -hmm. big time. Because, I mean, I'm going there for the experience, but I really want to try to at least do decent. I don't want to get, like, embarrassed my first match. <laughs> um, I... How'd I go for me? I I mean, I was always, I always went there primarily for Smash. Yeah. Uh, Tech and I played... I think I remember, like, I... Did I bring my stick? I forget. I don't think I brought my stick. I think my like something about it. I think I just brought a controller, which I'm not used to playing. And I think I I, I think I went like one and two. I think I lost right away. But I think I because that was when I was in a weird character thing where I think I just picked up. I I started up as Eddie, got my ass kicked right away. Then I swapped to Julia and I actually did pretty solidly. But uh, yeah, I I mean when it comes to like actual fighting games. When I lab it out, like Tekken Tag 2, I got all the achievements in. I, I went in on that game. Uh, yeah. Tekken 7, I played enough of it that I felt pretty good about, but I didn't do it consistently. It was like around launch, then it is what it is. Uh, I do need to grind out that too, because I would like to not go 0 and 2. That, that's kind of my thing. I don't want to go 0 and 2. I know enough about fighting games. That's, that's my, my rules. I don't go 0 and 2. I think I've only ever did it once in the history of like Smash. Um, but yeah, uh, I get that. I need I need to start doing that. I might start that this weekend. Actually, just start grinding out some some Tekken. We gotta get, we gotta get, yeah, get a I've fight night going. For sure. Yeah. No, I've just been trying to keep it like consistent. Thirty minutes, ten hour. Just get in, get out. Just uh, keep my keep my reflexes, keep my motor skills. How old are you? <laughs> in check. Uh, thirty. Yeah, we're boomers, dude. It's like we're oh, not, yeah. We're not getting <laughs> unless we were part of the old guard. We're not getting anywhere these days. Um. Right on. Any other games you played? Uh, that's it for me. Just Final Fantasy and Tekken. I mentioned Tekken it on, on Games Gone By. I mentioned it now. Bellatro is my fucking addiction. <laughs> Card games, as we mentioned. Kyle's playing out. That's my addiction right now. Uh, Bellatro is amazing. That's um, another one for me. I, uh, not a video game, but I have been playing uh, some more TCGs. I've gotten into a new one, Star Wars Unlimited. Yes. A lot of fun. Been a lot of fun doing. I've uh, been going to all the weeklies so far. Been going to few times a week it's been a whole lot of fun cool thing is too i've been since uh i do graphic design that's what i do for my nine to five i'm kind of an artsy dude so i've been trying to work on 3d alters i don't know if it'll come up but like Ooh. oh that's cool um, yeah so that's, I've been, that's cool i've been working on that a little bit doing getting my uh my exacto knife skills in check so that's been fun too speaking of card games what kind of graphic design you, you do essentially 
Like what? what? Uh, like right now I do uh, like corporate design. I'm technically a production artist, so I'm making like packaging and stuff. Uh, but I mean, I can do it all. I, it's what I went to school for. It's just that that's uh, <laughs> that where the money was. Job. Exactly. That's a good job that I'm at. <laughs> the insurance. Yeah. And David, David needs to hire you to, to redesign the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, we'll see. I need to hire him. As I said, <laughs> David needs to hire him. <laughs> um, that's cool. Uh, I, I'm. Uh, I wish I had the energy to to want to do like weeklies any like at all. Uh, we have a game shop here that does some stuff, which is cool. Uh, Smash has 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 tournaments that I would love to do, but man, I just by the time I get home, I'm like I don't I don't whatever sacred time I have that's already a couple hours. If, even if it means just me zoning out and just staring at the wall for a little bit, that's fine. But like, it, it's just hard to convince me to want to be like, go to those because they're fun. Like, right? Like, I never not have fun when I'm in an outing. Um, I'm an ambivert, so like, I technically like, I as much as I don't want to admit it, when I go out, like, I do get energy. Like, that's why I'm, I'm just going when I'm out there. But then, like, when I get back, I'm tired, which is the the extrovert side of me, right? Where I'm like, oh, there's not. But then, like, I just don't want to do things though like i'm tired i'd rather like i'd rather be tired longer at home because i have more time to like lay down than like had a good night get home at like 10 fuck all right better force myself to sleep because that's gonna happen uh, all right uh besides bellatro shit uh yakuza been playing that yakuza zero uh, chipping away slowly. Um, not not anywhere of note right now, but uh, it is doing the Adrian thing where I'll chip away at the first three hours in the span of two weeks, and then it just snowball from there. So we'll be there. Um, David, was there any big news this week? Uh, today was officially the last day of uh, the Wii U and 3DS online services. Rest oh. in peace. As in, mm. as in, uh, no, no, per- not purchasable, or you mean? Yeah, all, all the online services for Wii U and 3DS are gone now. Okay, you can still re-download games. Um, yeah, but yeah, so okay. Uh, no purchasing, no playing online games or anything. Unfortunate. Um, Luckily, people already have uh, alternatives set up and running. There's even one group that found an SSL exploit that makes it so that way you can actually play on unmodded Wii U's online again still. Nice. So, Sick. fucking <laughs> shout out to those people. Hell yeah. See, if you're a Valve, uh, you just hire those people and there you go. It's true. Uh, there was also... Uh, a. This is more on the tech side, and in, in, in my wheelhouse, uh, there was a major fucking uh, exploit that happened last week. Uh, long story short, basically most <laughs> of uh, modern businesses and internet functionality could have been easily destroyed. Uh, so the TLDR is there is a package that is maintained for Linux. Uh, called XZ, and it's uh, does a lot of like zipping and archiving things like that. Uh, but it tethers into a lot of other repository functions. Apparently, uh, some hacker had taken over the account that actually maintains that package, <laughs> and they've been doing the long con. From all the information that has been known, this person has genuinely been maintaining the repository for two years and then within the past uh, few months has been slowly sipping in code that when it went finally went live last week it basically made it so that way they were able to hijack systems that were using that repository so this predominantly included any arch linux any kind of rolling release distribution, uh, I think Fedora was impacted. Um, anything that was a test build of Debian, uh, which I would include like Ubuntu, things like that. Uh, anything that was on a test or rolling release version was impacted. Which, that is most server infrastructure in enterprise environments. 
that is most government agencies that aren't using old as shit window boxes uh that is airlines that it, that is just a weird wild thing uh that someone has put in playing the long con and just basically try to take over the internet and the cruelest and wildest irony of it all is it was discovered by a microsoft employee <laughs> Basically, the dude was going ahead and running uh, a zip over SSH and was like, huh, this is taking way too long to run. Why is that? And he discovered the exploit. And then immediately the Linux community kind of jumped in. Uh, the Git repository was taken down. And there's been a lot of discussions. And it's already been forked into a safer branch. Uh, but it's just one of those weird things that it there's uh there's an old xqcd article uh joking around about this of like all of modern society is dependent on this one thing built like 17 years ago as a hobby project for some guy and this is the closest we've potentially gotten to seeing mass scale destruction of the uh, of modern internet and modern uh enterprise infrastructure and it's fucking wild. Uh, 2K all over again. True. Uh, yeah, speaking of, like, first of all, we, we survived the end of the world yesterday, so shout out. It's true. Yeah. We did survive the rapture. Um, Rapids did not bring forth the god hand. Thank who god. knew? <laughs> who knew? <laughs> Could have been me. Um, they didn't have to bail it. Let me read this post off uh, Reddit, actually, from uh, Frigid Evil. Uh, this is because it's a cool thing. Uh, Mario Maker has been defeated. Uh, <coughs> about two weeks ago, victory was declared for Team Zero Percent in their quest to defeat every single level of Mario Maker before it's taken offline. Oh, that's Un cool. Unfortunately, it was a fire victory as the final level was left was admitted to being uploaded via via TAS by the level's creator, which meant the uh, all legitimately cool uploaded. Yeah, which which meant all legitimately uploaded levels were beaten. So, saying that like to beat to upload a level to to Mario Maker, you have to beat the level. So they they TAS'd it to be like, all right, we put this level up there. That you can't. It, it was TAS'd. Uh, so everyone's like, well, I guess we beat all the legitimate levels, uh, which was amazing. But it left a sour taste in the community's mouth. The top uh, Mario Maker runners have put many hours in the past couple weeks into that level. So finding out that the work was not even possible, uh, arguably not even possible, uh, was pretty disheartening. So yeah, so like everyone was like, this is the last level. So everyone was trying to tackle that thing. And then the guy's like, yeah, we, we uploaded it via TAS. So everyone's like, <sighs> you know, though, that's kind of wild that there's only one level that basically got through to a point where it was unbeatable because it was only beatable through TAS. Well, That's wild. The, the story's not over, David. Oh, Alas, there's more. The community persisted. And four days ago, so meaning that three days before the shutdown of that not being possible anymore, uh, SanYX91SMM2 beat the level. Hell yeah. He beat the level, yeah. so... He has his uh, post on Twitter. There's no reaction because dude was just streaming it, but uh, he popped off uh, and good shit to him. So shout out to that. Three days before a shutdown, dude persist. And you know what? Shout out to that because can you imagine that? How that's a persistence to be like, guy came out, hey, yeah, I TAS'd it. And dude's like, fuck that. I got this still. So kudos to that. Now every single. Mario Maker level was beaten, no matter that's some good shit TS right or not. So big shout out to awesome. that. Uh, Mario Maker is the biggest bummer of it not not continuing forward. I think like yeah, Smash Four is someone that it's funny because right now Smash Four is kind of getting a resurgence, a renaissance of like people like being like yeah, that game was pretty good. So I can agree. I, I I have my issues with it. Two stock is being one, but anyway, uh, Mario Maker I think is the biggest loss though because the tablet mwah, for for Mario Maker. Tablet was so good. The Switch does not compare in that that mind. Having the dual screen and having like the tablet just work and just throw stuff on the screen like that, that was the way Mario Maker is supposed to be played, not not back and forth toggling. 
Um, so that was a cool story. Shout out to them. Uh, I do want to give another shout out. Uh, shout out to Harada for asking his community, hey, what's the story behind Waffle House and why do people keep asking for it to be added to Tekken? Um, it'll never happen, but Lord help me, if it ever does, that's amazing. That that I want. I, I at least hope we get like an in-universe equivalent like a diner. of Waffle House. Yeah, just yeah. some kind of diner level in general. Pancake home. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I can see that happening, but you know what? I feel like Waffle House should be in on the joke. Be like, you know what? Fuck it. Do it. Like, why not? Yeah, for real. Like Chipotle is getting behind Tekken. Why can't Waffle House be cool with it? Come on. Exactly. I do. Imagine Evo sponsored by Waffle House. <laughs> for real, that'd be so. Have cool. your fight. Hey, is that fighting in video games? Fight in real life. Go to Waffle House. Uh, I've I've for whatever reason recently I just had like the most insane just cravings of of Waffle House. Always happens like at one or two o'clock in the morning, uh, which is appropriate for when that happens. Dave, you ever been, <laughs> you ever been to one? No. Yeah, I'm, I'm right assuming yet. you, yeah, the way you reacted, I'm assuming, yeah. You need to take it to a Waffle uh, House. Yeah, those triple hash browns, get them smothered, get them covered. Oof. Dude, and it's cheap. It's cheap, it's quick, it's efficient. It's a good time, David. We're going to take you out of Waffle House next time you're around. <laughs> Hell yeah. Uh, let's see, I'm going to scroll through this. Uh, shout out to Baldur Gate 3, uh, dev, publisher, director, calling game industry layoffs an unavoidable, uh, or a uh, quote, Avoidable fuck up. God, love like to every see it. every day that passes, I just love Larry and more. Like, it's one of those things. Like, I don't want to see them fall or see them trip up or do something bad somewhere down the line because they've just built so much goodwill. Just like over this uh, development period, I feel like for Baldur's Gate three. Yeah, and you know what? I appreciate them being honest with being. Hey, hey no more Baldur's Gate three stuff. We're moving on. Yep. Mm-hmm. Cool. Thank you for letting us know. So no one's like DLC or this. Like, no, we're moving on. We're good. We're past it. Yep. Uh, Apple to allow gaming emulators on iOS App Store. That happened. That was that was a post a couple days ago. Um, Stellar Blade uh, director says, industry console titles need more single player games with an ending. I agree. Yeah. Okay. Stop leaving everything open. Some guys want to beat a game and just move on. Uh, Dwarf Fortress had 800,000 copies sold. Jesus Christ. Hell yeah. Uh, One million wishlist on Steam. That's a game I have wishlist. I'm just scared to play it, though. I, I played the original ASCII version a few times. It is a wild fucking ride. The, yeah. the absurd level of shit that can happen. Yeah, I'm I'm scared. That, that's like... <sighs> I can't. Nope. Closing that. I looked at it for a second. Uh Konami base salary increase for third consecutive term increased starting salary for new graduates thirty three hundred thousand yen. How much is that converted? Uh yeah. like totally making up on the gotcha machines. So, so I mean Yeah, right. Uh you more than to pay. <laughs> I think that'd be like twenty five, twenty eight, somewhere around there. Salary for new grads, 300,000 yen. That, that's, oh, hold on. Uh, $2,000? That's not true. <laughs> Is that true? That, that, they that... move the decimal point over too, and then roughly give or take from there. Yeah, what the fuck? They get two thousand dollars a year. Can't be a year. Yeah, I'm getting nineteen seventy seven off. <laughs> There's no way that's right, surely. <laughs> oh, hold on, what the fuck? Uh, yeah, I wonder if there's supposed to be an extra zero. <laughs> Yeah, it's supposed to be their monthly take home. Uh, the publisher oh. said it's raised its employees' monthly earnings Salary by fifty thousand. Salary is monthly for these guys. Gotcha. Okay. okay. 
Yeah, the yeah. salary means yearly to me. Yeah, same. Um, that makes a yeah. lot fucking more sense. God damn. Yeah, that I was like, there's something wrong here. Um, apparently, I think Japan with that cheap to live. Holy fuck. They do say that. Uh, uh, the average rent for a single person in Japan is over eight hundred dollars. Uh, someone bought it. Someone in the comments said I bought a, a new four bedroom house in Tokyo and my mortgage is just over a thousand dollars a month. For a four bedroom, that's fucking pretty good actually nowadays. Yeah. Yeah. And they said uh, 35 year term, zero down payment, 0.3 interest rate. Damn. My, uh, my grandmother, she's from Okinawa. And just within the past few years, we found out apparently she has a plot of land there on the island to her that just she ain't know about but huh. it randomly came up because i guess they're trying to build like a highway <laughs> and she like that plot of land like owned by her or the her family or whatever since she hasn't technically gotten it yet anyways yeah but it's just come up it's like oh hey by the way uh buy this land and so i'm trying to convince her like no don't sell it we need to go see what's up is there a house there what's going on <laughs> yeah we need to figure out if uh, we got a retirement home or not or right. a vacation home <laughs> exactly. how much are they offered <laughs> um it was they're trying to like slow play and like slow ball it because yeah. i guess they're trying to buy land from like a long strip Mm -hmm. like of people that own land there and so they're trying to like kind of drag it out because i think it's been like four or five years now and just mm. like every once in a while she'll hit me up because i speak a little bit of japanese and i can read a little bit of it so and she's like completely americanized so she can speak it and stuff but she's r super rusty and so she'll just hit me up and be like hey so this lawyer's trying to talk to me I'm like don't talk to him you, we need to talk to our own people <laughs> don't Dude, agree don't sign anything my my eyes just light up whenever i see someone's like hey we need your land for for uh, a highway you don't say all right how bad do you want this highway exactly <laughs> and you get like the comical thing where they just build the highway there's like do a loop around your house because you would you would say no i don't want that like, all right fuck it that actually happened to uh my partner's uh parents they uh wanted to try to get it they wouldn't and so they literally just built around the house <laughs> i love it that's that those things are so funny oh. to me <laughs> uh so I, I a big shout out whenever i see that like in real life i'm like good for you guys fuck them <laughs> i'm taking our shit uh what what is up with this battle pass for Tekken? Because I'm yeah, reading that so... that reviews fell to mixed over, and I did I've been seeing some 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 kerfuffle on on Twitter of like how the monetization in Tekken's been pretty shit. Yeah, the monetization is bad. Uh, they also again only introduced this after launch, which is fucking scummy. Yeah, I I, I, don't, I, I love Tekken, I love Harada, etc. But comma, however. If you're gonna go ahead and put something into your game after the review period and after the launch window, you're fucking scummy. Yes. Absolutely fuck right on well, off. And well. on top of that, uh, they have shit options uh, charge an absurd <laughs> amount of things, and they've been also going now after modders. Uh, basically pulling what Capcom has been doing least, uh, recently. And going after anyone that's making mod content for the game. Yeah, so two Fuck things off. to add on that. Uh, yeah, one quote, agree with you. Love Tekken, but adding a cash shop and Battle Pass two months after launch in a $70 game is maybe the scummiest bait and switch I've ever seen. I'd refund if I could. Uh, and then, um, yeah, I, I see what they're, they're adding. Like, it costs money to do shit that you could do in the past games for free. Yep. Um... We can't just be biased. We got, we got, we got to be real. Which obviously, D David will always be real. He'll always talk always about that. Always be real. Uh, Kels, I know you, we, we're we're playing the game too. Uh, educate the ignorance. So what, what's what's the big issue here? Because I I was it. I have the fight pass. This is in the battle pass though, right? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Uh. The pirate edition was at reveal the fight pass. 
Oh, so there's a season pass and a fight pass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think the fight pass is like the DLC characters specifically, right? I think so. No, uh, the season pass is, is the DLC characters. Fight pass oh. is, is that battle pass, I, I am assuming. Gotcha, right. gotcha. Uh, and and they, they launched alongside Eddie in order to kind of like slip it in real quick. Hey, if we give you a fan favorite, maybe you won't hate us as much. Right. It's, it's, uh, it, <laughs> That reminds me of when the the PS4 uh, thing was announced, and they were like going off. They're like, "We're letting used games." Everyone's like, "Yeah, you can you can lend it to your friends." Yeah, we're doing all this. Everyone's like, "Yeah, uh, PS uh, PS Plus is now required for online games." Yeah, wait, what? Uh, you can also like <laughs> borrow this. Yeah, <laughs> I remember like. Also, now we're charging for PS Plus. Yeah, well, PS Plus is always charged, but it's mandatory for online now. Um, well, no, because on PS3 it was free. PS Plus doesn't. No, no, PS Online was free, but PS oh. Plus was all what PS Plus back in the day was fucking dope as hell. PS Plus back in the day was where they gave you a bunch of just free games every month, but it was like, yeah, baller. Like there was there was a good solid free games back in the day for for PS Plus because that was the only incentive, right? It wasn't the no, online that's right, thing, that's right? Yeah. And then when they I made it, about that. and then when they lumped in the online with it, they're like, all right, we can uh, now you get this uh, random indie game you never heard of that's really got low review scores, but you know you're gonna get it anyway. Um, but yeah, we're watching the end of that. <laughs> Wait a second, is that mandatory? Everyone's like, everyone's still cheering for it. Yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, that's how it's. You got Eddie. Fuck yeah. Wait, what? What is this? <laughs> Hold up, rewind. <laughs> oh man. Um, yeah, no, I'm completely with David on it. it. Whenever you add stuff like in this, like after the fact, absolute scumbag move. Like, I, have I'm, some like gusto about it. Let us know ahead of time. Like, you obviously know it's a bad idea if you're trying to sneak it in. Yeah, exactly. I, I'm a little bit of two minds. Um, like, did okay. So, the whole thing you include the battle pass because you're looking to make more money. Did they like the most charitable like way to infer? Did they just not know that they needed more money <laughs> and they just put the battle pass in last second? Tekken and Seven was, wasn't there. Tekken Seven, I thought was super successful in how it how right. it rolled out. That's what I thought too, but I've also been hearing stuff like I guess new characters cost a lot to fucking make, like over half a million dollars, like per new character. That can't be right. That's fucking absurd. Right, that's what I thought too. That sounds correct to me because you wonder because like I think the reason why is because it's no longer all hands on deck making everything. It's like you have just a small structured team to make just this content. Um, mean that you have to chill out a little more for that versus like yeah you could add 40 new characters to this because that's everyone on the team is working on that collectively uh and that that it's like why smash like buying both battle passes for smash is literally the msrp of the game at that point um but uh that makes sense a little bit too because the i remember the last season pass of tech and seven was like what two characters uh it was like frame data and a stage yeah like, they skipped a bit on that oh yeah <laughs> it was like they charge for frame data <laughs> yeah here's frame data yeah it's in the season pass fuck what <laughs> um yeah i'm of two minds i get the games cost money granted like it's not a live service game unless you give me free stages i don't see a reason for battle passes but like, I guess, um, I think I have an issue with the fact that the battle passes are just what you had in past games, but now cost money. Yeah. If it was like right. all brand new content you've never had before, okay. But, mm. and this is, it's, it's. I, here's the thing. I absolutely don't think we should be charging full price for a fucking game and then having any kind of continued monetization. Unless it's... A, you know what? Fine. It, we have come to accept the art of the expansion pass uh, or the expansion pack back for you know the boomer days. But 
give me a good sizable in one and go chunk of new content or give me new characters we'll always pay for new characters but this whole we're gonna sit feed you extra costumes or throw in all these extra small little bits of customizables and all this extra little shit no if you're gonna a aim to continue to monetize and feed then the game should either be free and go the full classic MOBA route, or you should be a twenty dollar game. Here you go, fuck it. Here's twenty dollars. Uh, that is your entry fee into it, and then here's all the monetization shit that you're gonna Hell start divers. paying for. Isn't that the? Isn't that what Killer Instinct does now? Isn't it free, and then you pay for character or something like that? I think yeah, so. it's uh, free rotated. Did that too. Free rotated characters. Yeah, and Dead or Alive does that now as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have the tweet from Parada. Someone uh, tweeted them last month, I guess, was talking about pricing. He said development costs are now ten times more expensive than in the nineties, and more than double or nearly triple the cost of Tekken Seven. So, but I wonder how true that is. Here's the thing. Yes. I agree with it, but that's because they also decided to make this game look the way it did and and be as flashy as it could, right? Like, again, these budgets are getting overblown. I have no idea why. They, it, well, actually, I do. It's because people want this to be the biggest, like, graphics are incredible and and this thing is and this thing and that this thing. And it's like, Tekken 7 was still popping off perfectly fine. Make it yeah. look like marginally better. I don't need to. I, it Honestly, didn't... you could have just done a, mo- a fucking current gen re release uh, all in one package of Tekken 7. That probably would have coasted them pretty fucking well for a while. People have been begging for a re release of like three, too. So, I mean, they I, have I, so I, many options there. In hindsight, I've been like cool with like just a full on remake of three. That'd be kind of sick. Um, mm-hmm. But. The, we just—I just don't need everything to be, look this this crazy. It, it's like, just chill. That's fine. I'd I'm happy. Like a demake too. That'd be really cool. <laughs> Hell yeah! Yeah, give me the old blocky fighters again. <laughs> um, let's see. And, Is there anything like else? another thing I can think of too. Like there's a comment someone said. Uh, Respectfully, Tekken 8's already a seventy dollar title, and you're selling a hundred dollar deluxe editions with it too. So, yep. I mean, that's another thing. I mean, you're already... Charging $10 more. Seven, well, it should have covered it, right? Everyone's like, oh, inflation, development costs. All right, fuck it. We charge $10 more for everyone. It's not enough. All right. And then, yeah, we had the we had diff- different versions. And I bought the fucking one with, uh, with the season pass already. So, you got season pass. And correct me if I'm wrong. Did season pass come out this early for Tekken 7? Not this early, no. I don't think so, because... Well, the thing with Tekken 7, though, is it was in arcade for a while, too. And yeah, they, yeah. Was, was it Dark Judgment, or what was the console release? I can't remember. Uh, you're thinking of with Tekken 5, with Dark Resurrection. Yeah, uh, but no, uh, they, they did release it. I think it was like a year or two later on console, finally. Um, but then after the console release, I think it was still like maybe a year or so before there was even mention of DLC characters. You know what? Like, the best thing Tekken did with DLC was Tekken Bowl. Hell yeah. That was yep. cool. <laughs> um. Okay, so... Okay, no, it was it was early on. So it released worldwide June 2nd, 2017. I think that's console. Yeah, and the season yeah. pass released alongside that, too. Okay. Yeah. Oh, it did release alongside it? Yeah. Okay. See, this makes me scared, like, going forward, like, because they packaged all this with Eddie, right? So what happens whenever we get, like, an Armor King announcement? Should I be, like, really worried that something else... It's going to be a punch pass. <laughs> a punch pass. So you, have, you, have the, you, get, you get 10 free games a day. After that, you got to buy more You got to buy more matches. Sort of limiting your amount. Oh, good. So we're just basically going back to fucking... Oh, we're just taking Revolution. No, just go back to quarters. Fuck it. Got to play a game, put a quarter in. Did you actually do that shit that 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 uh, what's his name from uh, EA was like? Yeah, you make them pay a dollar to reload their yeah, gun. Paper mags, yep. Yeah, fuck <laughs> off. 
that I don't know. Games they're expensive. Or you can play or you can play Bellatro and get thirty hours out of ten dollars, dude. True. Very so. true. Or you could pay you could get Final Fantasy Seven Rebirth, which is about three hundred hours for seventy dollars. Or the game we talked about last night, Persona Five. <laughs> yeah. I literally bought it for thirty bucks on Switch and that's a hundred hour game. <laughs> yeah. Big shout outs to those. <laughs> it that it feels good gay gave on a good price is sinking a lot of time. Do you, do you ever know David also, had a David had an old uh, way to buy games that he it took him a while to break. You know, you ever, you ever hear his whole buying scheme? No. <laughs> so I, I used to have this philosophy that uh, the goal was to get a game whose playtime averaged out to be about a dollar an hour. Oh, okay, yeah, I got you. Yeah, I've heard this theory. It wasn't it a theory for sense. David. It wasn't there. It was the way David bought games for Law. many years. <laughs> uh, yeah. So like, David, like, when did you stop doing that? Oh, uh, once I bought the second or third shelf. <laughs> but like, what what year do you think you would say like? Uh, five years ago, you think seven, you stopped? Eight years ago? Yeah, seven eight. So like seven eight years ago, if if David from now said. One of your favorite games is going to be a two-hour walking sim that you're going to buy for, like, 15 bucks. No, in fact, you're, you bought more because anyway, you bought physical copies of it, kind of. I was going to say, yeah, no. I, uh, I I bought a $200 collector's edition of the Annapurna collection explicitly because it's the same price as buying the individual What Remains of Vita Finch game. Which used. I feel like... There's a world where if the Annapurna collection did not come out, I'm not saying David would, but like I can promise you, a small part of his brain would have always wanted to buy that. No, I, I easily would have bought that. Okay, 100%. I know. Okay, so yeah. The but, only reason I held off is because I already knew there was murmurs of another uh, Annapurna collection. Because otherwise, I would have been like, "Fuck, I guess I'm buying that now." Uh, but yeah, and imagine, I think that's... imagine David of now saying. You would consider buying a two hundred dollar copy of this two hour game. Old, yeah. you would have punched new uh, new you dude, like straight up. Hundred percent. Like fuck, dude, I thought you liked money, asshole. What did you turn into? Who are uh, you? So I don't like spending it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, shout outs. Uh, we forgot to cover this uh, last week, uh, but it is officially. The two-year anniversary since Blue Box Game Studios has gone radio silent. Blue Box we have con we continue to be abandoned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, shout shout <laughs> outs, <laughs> shout outs to Gore, dude. I'm <laughs> sorry. No, <laughs> it's a Kojima thing. No, it's no, 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 not even that. But Gore's fucking reaction kills me. I I've watched that so much. It was so funny. Just like the countdown, he was all excited. He's, he sees all walking, like, oh, and then just <laughs> cut out. He's like, "No fucking way! That's not the whole fucking thing." And then his, he keeps the stream going on for like forty five minutes, just hoping something else happens. And someone comes into the stream. It's like, "Hey, what's up? What I missed?" And Gore's pissed. He's like, "Oh, you you didn't miss something here. Hold on, let me let me show here. Let me show you what you fucking missed." And just plays the plays the trailer. So there you go. <laughs> That killed me, dude. Oh man! <laughs> Shout out to Abandon. That was a that was a fun that was a fun moment in time. <coughs> that uh, replaced <coughs> some people. It's it's so crazy how games like this and uh, what was the other one the day before or yeah, those, yep. it's so crazy how these games get this kind of funding, this kind of like backing behind it, and then. Like no one asks any questions. Like how how the fuck does this happen? Like how are you they, doing this? Uh, they changed their website now. If you go to Blue Box's website, it just says we are updating the website. Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. So all the uh, trailers and all the uh, build up stuff that was on the site for the game is all gone now. Oh yeah, they're gone. <laughs> Who knew? Who would have thought? I mean, considering it got attention from Sony, that's wild. Not you can me. still go download it. It could be this generation's PT. You know, you need to go download that experience yeah. just to make sure. <laughs> uh, <coughs> PT, though. 
fantastic. Um, is that about it? I think we've I think we've uh, covered pretty much everything then. Yeah, I think so. Um, last skim. Oh shoot! Hold on. Uh, so uh, the crew. Ubisoft's the crew is now unplayable, right? Because that that went offline. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Someone posted 16 hours ago. Uh, someone was able to get a refund from the PlayStation version of the Crew One after originally buying it in 2015, nine years ago. And they posted <laughs> a screenshot saying, "I confirm I provided a refund for the per- the purchase price of 94.99." Back to your payment method. Uh, <coughs> hey. Uh, yeah, you know what? Fuck it. Everyone do that, uh, cause fuck Ubisoft for that. Yeah. Yeah. One hundred percent. Imagine Ubisoft chilling right now and they wake up to like, what do you mean Sony's asking us for fucking fifteen million dollars? What? What? They gave people refunds. Why? <laughs> oh my god, I love that. Uh. Did you see that? Um. Uh... Okay, so you mentioned earlier playing Friday the 13th game. Did you see that apparently that's getting like a fan like it was brought back? Yeah. Oh, was it's it's not <laughs> So yeah, that that got uh that got shot down from uh, the legal team over behind everything uh, cuz Friday the 13th continues to be the most legal filled nightmare of a franchise ever. Um but yeah, that got shot down. They're like it's very unlikely that it's going to it's going to do anything that blows i feel like that one was probably like my favorite out of the asymmetrical uh asymmetrical horror or whatever yeah whatever you, what you want to call them yeah um that i could never get in dead by daylight i really want to so alan wakes in it now so i'm like i kind of want to just but like i hate multiplayer games that you have to grind to get to a point where you feel competent yeah. uh that's like my biggest thing about like not like hopping into balfo games later something like that is like I hate feeling like oh, I gotta play with the shit weapons before I get anything good, right? Like, give me give me Halo where I can like, all right, cool, I'll just go run over the rocket launcher and play that, right? <laughs> um, but Friday the Thirteenth was 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 fun. I think it was a glitchy fucking mess. I think a lot of times it was it was dumb in the way it worked. Uh, I I this is a this is an early story. I'll never ever told them blue rupees. Friday the Thirteenth, Jason didn't work for me for months. <laughs> I had no idea. They were I would be able to play Jason and then not just one day. And I was like, what the fuck? Whenever I tried to pull him up, like the UI wouldn't work. I tried deleting it, reinstalling it. I tried like like deleting the, the, the cache. I tried like all this stuff. Nothing worked. And I forget what it what I even contacted their support. We couldn't figure out what the fuck it was. And I forget if I looked it up. I think I looked it up and saw this comment because I remember I was I was online with everyone. We we're trying to play the game, and they knew that I just never got to play as Jason. Like it was a long time I couldn't play as Jason. I'm sorry for months again, like months I couldn't play. As, I could only play as fucking Survivor. Every time that I played as Jason, we just kind of just let the game roll out real quick because like all right, I can't do anything, or we got to quit out of this lobby, which is dumb. So um, I forget if I read a comment, and I was in the call with everyone. I'm like, nah, because I read someone's solution was like, I think it, and I, I want to say this is what it was. I could have sworn it's been a long time, but I think I read a comment saying, hey, uh, this is what was wrong. And I looked at him like, the fuck? No. And I was like, what? I'm like, let's try something really quick. So I did what the, the comment did or what the comment said to do. Load it in. Jason worked fine. Well, guess guess what you think I, I you will literally never guess what it was it's the most it's the most bizarre fucking thing i don't understand how it has any relation to, to this at all but did you have to change your dns no think okay of, so it wasn't that fucking no. weird and dumb no this is weird and dumb as in like why does this have any how does this connect at all with what's happening in friday the 13th for just jason i'll give you I'm going to give you a couple guesses. I can give you the next 14 years to guess any possibility. I can promise you, you will not get it. 
Was there save data from no. a completely unrelated game? No. No. It has nothing to do with the UI or anything on the Xbox. Is it completely internal to the game itself? No. Oh, interesting. It's something external. Is it something with the Twitch app? No. Did you have a copy of Nightmare on Elm Street <laughs> too close to your system? I did. Nailed it. <laughs> David, you will literally... It's funny. Actually, I kind of like... Because I can tell that the, the tech brain is kind of rolling right now. Like, hold on. Let me see if I can solve this. You're never going to... I can promise you. Next, we can get to episode 500. Yeah, give you a guess every so, single episode. You will not get the it. The issue was external to the game, but nothing with the Xbox itself. Like settings or anything wise inside the Xbox? Nothing, none of that. It was not an in game setting. It was not in game has... setting. It was not like fiddling around with DNS or anything like that. None of that. Was it something like being on Wi Fi versus Ethernet? No. Was it hardware? Yes. You just have to swap out an HDMI cord and it all no. of a sudden works. <laughs> Again, it has nothing the... to do with the it has nothing to do with the actual anything connect like, it doesn't have anything to do with anything like that I need to do to play the fucking game. Okay, so was it something like it's specifically with like the elite controller that I was having an issue with? No. I do not understand the fuck. I, I don't understand how these wires connect in terms of like what the fuck is happening. And it's something. How about this? I'll even give you that. I'll push you didn't it. put it on channel three. That's I'll push this even farther. <laughs> it is nothing. It is something connected to the Xbox. It's something connected to the Xbox? Does that to do be like a fucking sound bar that you had as an in between? No. I'll give you, I'll give you two more guesses. Thing connected to the oh, fuck. Literally, it's so obscene, and this is a fucking thing. Was it the fucking uh, hard drive expansion? No, and no. One last one. <laughs> one last one. <laughs> you're 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 on like a right path with with the connect thing, but you're not gonna guess what it was. I'll give you one more hint after this next guess. I would love for you guys to somehow like land on this because like logically, it's just a logical fallacy that does not compute. That he was on the right track ish with the connect. Yes, something connected to the Xbox. The actual fuck? Oh it's a, man. It's a thing needed for a whole other fucking video game. Your not even the not even the same genre. <laughs> Say what? Wasn't your arcade stick? No and no, but you're like you're on the right path with kind of like thinking of how weird this shit is. Hmm. It's not a controller. I again, this, the, you can look around and try to think of it, David. You're doing the wrong thing. You're thinking of like, all right, how do I connect something? No, you have to just throw out random shit because, like, genuinely. You guys give up? Because you have a prolapsed anus, isn't it? Hey, nailed it. <laughs> okay. I, yeah, I, I, I have to tap. On the Xbox, there was a dongle that you needed to play the instruments for Rock Band for. Uh... Having that connected, for whatever reason, did not allow me to play as Jason properly. I don't what know. What the actual fuck? I have zero idea. I remember someone mentioning... <laughs> I forget if it was someone mentioning, hey, disconnect all this shit to your Xbox, or was someone saying specifically that? But I was like, hold on. Disconnect the dongle? 
works. I don't know what part of the game communicates to that, to this, because there wasn't a connected, there was, the dongle wasn't connected to instruments. So it's like, maybe it was thinking, <coughs> hey, even though I'm controlling Jason, I just literally can't do any of the, the, the like teleport or anything like that. But maybe it's thinking like, hey, where's the other controller to this? I don't know. But that was the fucking weirdest thing that I've ever I experienced. I wonder if it's like an anti-cheat thing. Like maybe they thought you're trying to sideload something because uh, the dongle is a USB, isn't it? It so could be that, but like, I, uh, but that game was also like modded to fuck. Like, yeah, <laughs> there were people that that you there you would get in the game. Anyway. Yeah, there were cheaters everywhere. So I'd be surprised if there was any anti-cheat in that. But yeah, <laughs> I it, it, you could be on the right path there because that would make sense. But again, the game was was like littered with cheaters. Hmm. Um, yeah. So shouts to owning that, which by the way, that dong was like two hundred bucks. But uh, holy hell, yeah, I bought it for twenty. Um, shouts to that dongle where uh. Just didn't want me to play as Jason. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think out of all those games to go back to that, I think that was my favorite one for sure. I've, I've never been able to get another asynchronous game like that. I wish Dead by Daylight because I love how popular it is and all that and how cool it is and all that, but it's too much of a grind to get to, to there. For sure. Um, <clears throat> last thing I'll say before we're out, shout to Culture Crave. Uh, quote, there's tweet just they posted out um, uh, yesterday. Uh, the, the movie The American Society of Magical Negroes has been pulled from theaters after only three weeks. Finished with $2.4 million in the box office, 28% score on Rotten Tomatoes, budget estimated to be $15 million. <laughs> Couldn't imagine why that failed. <laughs> Shoutouts. Yeah, and I've heard the movie's just not that good also. Yeah. That's like, unfortunate. Apparently, like, apparently, like... On face level, like the name is kind of like okay, this has to be something there. Like they're they're trying to say something, and then apparently the story is just like completely, just really bad. Sounds about right. Uh, yeah. Also, the, they posted that uh, apparently um, uh, sometimes during the next like couple days through to May. Uh, Five Nolan films are going back to the real cinemas. So uh, tomorrow and uh, Friday, Dark Knight. <coughs> Next week, Interstellar. Week after that, Inception. Week after that is Insomnia, which is cool. Oh, no. And then week after that is Dunkirk. I might want to see Interstellar in theaters again. I, I, I just kind of hate that they're going back to the same old ones. Uh, like... I'd really like to see like the prestige or memento or something. Oh, dude. Uh, in theaters. <laughs> well, that's why, that's why insomnia threw me off. I'm like, I don't know why yeah. we're throwing insomnia in there when you don't have the prestige. Prestige is sick. Memento is fucking Jesus awesome. Fantastic. I like Christopher Nolan's like my favorite director. I, 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 every time I wonder, I'm like, yeah, but like safety brothers and all that stuff. But like Christopher Nolan just like nails it every single time. And I'm glad interstellar is getting like it's dues. Finally. I feel like it took a long time I feel like I watched that in theaters and had my mind blown, but everyone else was like, huh, I just thought it was kind of cool. Yeah, but I like how, Inception. Yeah, like, I, I, look, I really like how Interstellar has now, like, entered, like, that pop culture zeitgeist to where it's now, like, a like a thing. Like, whenever that trope happens, you're like, oh, like, Interstellar. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why it took, like, 10 years for that to happen. <laughs> right. I don't, know why, I don't know what caused everyone to, like, go back and go, like, oh, Interstellar was, was, was really good. Uh, cause yeah, I remember the reception of that. I, it was well received, but everyone was like, cool. But anyway, Inception was cool. Dark Knight was cool. <laughs> well, yeah, but Interstellar was incredible. Um, speaking of movies, uh, Dune 2, I think is coming back in IMAX here soon too. I need to watch Dune 2. I still have, I got, I got to watch Dune part one again. It was, it was, it was a little bit too slow for me, but I'm, I'm gonna try again. Um, I need to watch, I told David, have you seen Uncut Gems? Not yet. Uh, Kells? Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude. Uncut Gems. That uh, movie, like, gave me anxiety, and I'm not an anxious person at all. Dude, it's anxiety the movie, dude. Uh, have you seen The Bear? Yes. It's, yeah, that's another one. It's it, Uncut Gems is just like The Bear, like, it's, especially that one-shot episode. Yeah. Oh, dude. Oh, it's so good. 
Uh, just the bear hits a little bit closer to home because I have worked in kitchens like that. So yeah, it's like a uh, trauma coming back to the surface. But... How'd you like season two? You watch season two? Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I, uh, I, I, season two had a lot of Richie development in it, and I love that because season one for me made Richie like a almost an irredeemable asshole. Like I just hated him as a character, and then season two, it's like, no, you love him. You yeah. don't even know it yet, but you love him. <laughs> it, it so uh, also Kyle uh, Kyle in the chat saying read the do, the book Dune. Blah, blah. I I will. I have the 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 book too. Yeah. Do you even know how to read, dude? Yeah, I, as an English teacher, I don't. <laughs> don't tell don't tell my kids. Um, so, uh, the bear season one. Uh, me and my, my uh, from when I was in Reno, we just we just binned that entire season. He's like, hey, watch this watch this the show real quick. Let's watch like one episode, and I was like in i was like cool let, let's just watch the rest of it um and then season two had just come out but it was such whiplash from season one that i wasn't able to get into season two so i stopped like halfway through and i was like i know this is good tv but i need to come back in a different mindset because right now i'm like in that like anxiety but i love it kind of thing and season two like pumps the brakes on that a lot it's like chill Let's breathe and let's give these characters some like growth, which I appreciate. Like I know it's good, but I'm like, I yeah, you 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 psyched me out a little bit, and I wasn't ready for it. So let me come back to it at, at a different time. Um, so I'm excited to come back to that. But uh, yeah, uncut gems and 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 the bear season one are just like, holy shit! Can we breathe for a second? And everyone's <laughs> just yelling constantly. Uh, I remember, I think one of my students watched that when I brought it up. And they're like, you couldn't even hear anyone. I was like, that's the point. Everyone's fucking yelling over each other. Shout out to how that movie is filmed because, like, you have to know your lines and just scream over people constantly on that. Uh, Adam Sandler just snubbed that year. He he deserved a fucking nomination that year. That was his year. Um, so, David, I, I, I need you to watch out in theaters. It's your homework. All right, y'all. I think that's it. Hell yeah. Two and a half hours. Nice. There you go. See, we we get a third person and we're back to like at least two hours every episode, at least. Towering through it. Let's it didn't go. feel like two and a half. I, well, it's because you didn't say we're gonna make it a quick one today. That that's usually our curse. Yeah, but that's true. <laughs> I sound like a human being, not like a rest. I, I listen back to myself, I'm like, holy shit, I sound terrible. <laughs> that's commitment. That's commitment to the bit. Um Hey, Kels, I like this flow. This is a good flow, so. Yeah, cool. It was a lot of fun. Again, thank you guys for having me on with you. Thank you for having me on yesterday. That was a lot of fun, as as was tonight. Yeah. Anytime. Adrian, any uh, scope on when that comes out? No. Because I have to edit it now, too. Just know it was a thumbs up. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got to edit because I, I don't know what happened to my logo for, for Games Gone By, but it was just gone. Ooh. I don't know, so I got to find that now. Uh, but I got. I edit. thought we were done with it. I got to edit it, so <laughs> it just said Blueberry Podcast, and that might have been a thing that's been happening on that episode. I just might not have noticed it until just like this last time, finally, for some reason. Because otherwise, I don't know when that would have changed. Um, I'm gonna look back to these and I'm like, why did it say it's episode one? Watch, it's gonna say it's. I'm. I i do not know. Look, I'm not gonna look right now and check myself out. Uh, Donovan. Yeah, Kyle in chat saying based kells. Hell yeah. Based. Hell yeah. Based. 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 Uh, you're welcome back whenever. This is, this is a good flow. I enjoy it. For sure. Um, everyone in chat, appreciate. Yeah. We salute you. Yep. So, all right. That's <laughs> the podcast stream. Guys, shout out to April Rooney, Kyle. Uh, almost three hours. Good stuff. Hell yeah. David, Hell yeah. yeah. There you go. I was hoping we were going to time up, but <laughs> <laughs> there is no timing it. 